The GameCat meetup at PAX East 2024 felt like a whirlwind. Considering Thursday and Sunday were essentially travel days, we had to pack in practically everything we wanted to do in about 48 hours. We met tons of cool game cats, Kill Artist revealed his amazing artwork, Jeremy showed up, Tiff and Dan from Skydance were there, BJ from Urban Wolf Games flew in just to see us for a few hours, tons of cool games were shown off on the PAX convention floor, and there was panel after panel after panel of cool things to do throughout the entire weekend. But hold on, because right now we need to focus on something very specific for a minute. What all of you out there did, with your donations and your continued support, what you allowed us to do was you let the four co-hosts of PSVR Gamescast Live get together in person and meet each other for real for the first time ever. And once we were together, what else could you expect us to do other than film an episode of Gamescast Live? So this episode of Gamescast Live is dedicated to all of you. Thank you for letting us live out our dreams. Let's start the show. All right, so a lot of you guys know, maybe I've told the story before, but I'm going to start off before we even do anything else. Uh, I've told the story before where Jeremy and I used to record in my bedroom, throw a green screen up, like try to make it look all professional. We always called it playing house, right? It never felt real. We're going to record something. We're going to put it up on the internet, pretend that we do YouTube stuff, <laughs> right? We can't pretend right now. You guys are here. Nope. No one is home. <laughs> None of us. You guys aren't home. You're not home. You're not home. I'm not even home, and I live like 90 minutes away. <laughs> right? We can't pretend. And on that note, this is PSVR Gamescast Live, where we film live every single Monday, Wednesday, and Two Wise Friday, right here on YouTube. We do it live 6 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> God only knows what time it is right now, though. <laughs> For your viewing pleasure, and I'm sure Rye Pop is out there somewhere uploading this to podcast services <laughs> of your choice. <laughs> For your oral pleasure. <laughs> That's going to sound really good on the recording. Yeah, it will be. ASMR right there. My name is Brian Powell from this channel right here, PSVR Without Parole. And since it is Two Wise Friday, I feel like it's only appropriate to introduce my co-host from across the pond. It's Miles Dyer from YouTube.com slash Miles. Howdy, Brian. Howdy, Wes. Howdy, AJ. Hello, GameCats. Um, it's about 24 hours now that we've all hung out together. And, and I'm so sick of you already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually leaving early. Uh, straight after this, I'm getting the fly. Um, no, this is amazing. And uh, it's a testament to this amazing community uh, for showing up, uh, supporting us with uh, making us uh, being able to get out here. Just a massive thank you to this community. We've always said it's a, a very special community, very supportive with the things that we love, with gaming and, and VR, but it's also about like the connection that we have with each other, supporting in the Discord, join it if you haven't already. Um, link in the description, you guys. And <laughs> although this is pre-recorded, I will say do smash the like button. <laughs> Helps us with the algorithm, but yeah. Uh, no, thank you, everyone. And to my right, your left, I'm assuming, uh, this, this is AJ from The Underground. PSVR, underground. <laughs> what is up, Brian? Oh, wow. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's really special to be doing this in front of a live audience today for the first time. We'll, we'll give you a quick look of what they look like right here. Or maybe right here. I don't know, somewhere. Uh, thank you all who, uh, you know, came out here in attendance. It, it really means the world to us. Um, you know, we've said it over and over. It's the greatest community ever. And you guys uh, just continue to prove that over and over. So... Uh, really honored to be here. Thank you to everybody watching at home uh, that and everybody who made it possible for us to come out here uh, because without your support, we wouldn't be able to. So it's incredibly special and it's really fun covering this uh, PAX East 2024 event where we are representing PSVR 2 uh, and because <laughs> someone has to. <laughs> um, and uh, it's it's really special. So so welcome all. Hope you guys enjoy the show. And we got lots to talk about today, don't we, Brian? Uh, yes, we do, including introducing <laughs> <laughs> introducing Wes Dillon from our sister channel. I, it might be our brother channel. I don't want to misgender. Yeah, it doesn't channel. matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is Wes Dillon from Virtual Strangers. So um, it's a little weird, <laughs> right? 
Like we, we always say that, uh, that we have the best community and clearly we do that all of these people and again you all are probably seeing somewhere all of these people that are here everyone traveling from their corner of the world but they all and you all uh, have also made it possible for us to be here so again greatest people in the world and I'm, I'm kind of glad that uh, that we have been here for about a day yeah because I, I say it's weird I'm joking it's not weird and the reason it's not is because I've got to know these people on a personal level uh, over the last day and we've had the time of our lives so thank you all for being here I thank all of you for tuning in and caring what we think about VR and caring about us as individuals and uh, yeah I'm thrilled stoked to be here and, and Brian the funny thing is at the point that we're recording this it's um, five past eleven at night and <laughs> something I was very much looking forward to coming to the States was being able to like do games cast earlier in the evening and instead of doing this earlier you guys now get to do it at the time that I normally would be doing but uh, so uh, yeah very poetic <laughs> I feel like some kind of revenge or something yeah 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 For years of this now you know how it feels <laughs> now you yeah. know how it feels <laughs> Um, I don't know how to start a show when there's a bunch of people watching us. That's um, weird, right? Yeah. Uh, but I will say, listen, you all know this is AJ's show. You all know I just, I, I, it's, it's my pleasure to show up when you invite me. I, I thank you very much for it. You're welcome. Um, however, this really, this, today this really is AJ's show. Because I was like, let's just do a freeform thing. Let's just be relaxed and like, you know, talk to you guys and whatever. AJ's like, no, I got, boy, do I have a run of show for you. <laughs> and it's the longest run of show I've ever seen. And there's four of us here. Yeah. So do you guys have anywhere to be for the next seven hours? <laughs> because we're going we're gonna to be here. Top 20 debate. Top, <laughs> top 25 debate. Let's go. This is we, we, awesome. I almost considered that. All right. We, we could we could just do uh, go ahead and do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for next week <laughs> yeah. while we're sitting here. We'll just chop it up later. Segment it. Yeah. Perfect. Um, okay, our first news story. Okay, so this is, uh, of course, we are out here because of PAX East 2024. Um, and... Uh, there's while we've been here getting ready for traveling, there's actually been some PSVR 2 news. There's been some new games that have dropped. Uh, we've gotten to demo uh, a PS a new PSVR game that dropped a PSVR 2 game that dropped uh, at PAX and lots of things. But today, uh, Genotype has uh, uh, released on the store for uh, 2749. Now some of these guys have played Genotype, so they're gonna share their impressions but first can, can uh, we share our impressions first of the canadian price for this <laughs> the, that, that is the most canadian price i've ever seen on a united states game 2749 yeah so that's not with a discount or anything no that's just the base <laughs> price just the price wow. but uh they're getting creative they're exploring the entire pricing <laughs> scale now so the description on the playstation store uh it says your weapons are alive Print creatures and use them as weapons and tools. In this Metroidvania first-person shooter uh, adventure, you explore an abandoned lab in Antarctica overrun by monstrous beasts. Print living creatures to use as weapons and survival tools and take part in a fully voice-acted story uh, as the facility's sole survivor guides you through an alien ecosystem. You're not, you're not going to read the whole thing, read the whole thing. Like, but, right. but no, you're there's one more, one there. more you're sentence. Okay. Power but, but, but what role did he play in the research station's downfall? Dude, this is the shit that I copy and paste in the PSVR this week every single yes, week. Yes, I'm I was, doing I was reciting favorite. it in my head <laughs> along with you. So, so, Brian, I know you've played a little bit. Wes, you've played a good chunk of it, yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about this game? You want to go? You wanna oh, go? no, no, it's all you. Okay, all right. So, uh, as many of you already know, I absolutely love this game. This is a, a throwback science fiction action-adventure first-person shooter game that really reminds me of kind of the onset of the digital gaming age, you know, PS1, PS2 era. Uh, I absolutely love it. There's, there's great progression. Um, it's challenging gameplay. It's a big, you know, a, a pretty big map and it's story driven. Everything that, uh, that I love in a game, it, like it's really, really good. I haven't had a chance to play it on PlayStation yet, obviously, but uh, on Quest, it is exceptional. So I expect the same to be true here. 
I did hear a couple. I, I did look for any impressions I could because obviously we don't have our PS5s handy. We don't have our PSVR 2s. We're a little limited in what we could play. Usually when this stuff drops, we immediately, you know, jump out and play it and give you guys impressions as soon as possible uh, so that you know whether to buy it or to hold off. Um, the first early impressions, not much, just a little bit, have actually been pretty positive overall. So, you know, with PSVR 2 launches, we never know. Uh, what's going to be good, what's going to be not and uh, uh, good. And um, so far, it's looking pretty good. They're saying that this kind of feels like a PS3 era game in VR, which is supposed to be a good thing, Who, I think. Who's they? <laughs> uh, who's they? Because, listen. Reddit user uh, Jimbo. <laughs> this is you, right? One, right. one yes. It's, it's always you. <laughs> one, one Reddit user. <laughs> Reddit user, genotype. Uh, <laughs> genotype dev. Dev, yeah. Underscore dev. Yeah. Not dev. Not what's, your, uh, what's your experience with this game? Oh, I mean, it was, it was, it was good for a quest game. I, that, I, I hate qualifying it like that. But, um, but no, it was, it was fun, and I couldn't wait to see where it went next. And I had fun, like, uh, you know, exploring the different weapons, the biological weapons. Uh, it was a good time, but like you know, after about an hour playing it on Quest, I was like, "Well, I'm excited to play this on PSVR too." Um, so uh, yeah, I'm hoping they didn't screw it up somehow. Well, the, the, they have, the, the support's been great for it. It's had, I think, three major updates uh, since I put most of my time into it, and uh, it, it's had environment updates. It's had uh, AI updates with the enemies. It's had the progression system tweaked. Um, so the the version that's coming to PSVR two today should be the best version of the game. It should be. Excellent. Sci-fi action shooter. Is there any horror elements? Or? Uh, I mean, it gets a little scary at times. I wouldn't call it a horror game. It says game, it's a Metroidvania. It is, kind of. I mean, you do kind of uh, backtrack through the map. If you want. There, there like is, you gain new abilities that let you explore? Um, I'm kind of. I mean, you... you yeah. Looper says yes. Um, Thank you, Looper. Kind of. I mean, I, I mean. I can't wait till twenty questions. We're, we're, it's going to be us. It's Looper. We didn't tell you this yet, but when it comes to twenty questions, it's going to be us four against you. <laughs> right. Yeah. In a true twenty questions fashion, I don't you're, think you're any of us have actually by worked the game yet. <laughs> um, listen, I'd love to talk about a game that we haven't played the PSVR two version of all night. However then what are you and I going to talk about on Monday? Yeah. So so we should be playing this. We'll, we'll play this. Between now and Monday. Yep. And then, and then we'll talk about it on Monday show. Give our first impressions. Right. What's, what's our next news story? Our next news story, Brian, <laughs> or Brain, uh, Soul Covenant finally has a release date. Um, this is, of course, from Third Verse, one of your favorites. Um, <clears throat> I mean, they're, they're fun for, like, a day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you I mean, you put like 50 hours into Yes, yeah, so 50 hours into Swords of Gargantua. I played like every day for a month. Yeah. Uh and then uh, Elver and I enjoyed a lot of help me out. Uh, uh oh my god, All Tear Breaker. All Tear Breaker. Thank you very much. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. Oh yeah. Uh, so th these guys th these guys make fun games. Uh the interesting thing about this game though, uh was that it was actually I, I didn't realize it actually comes from the team that made the uh Soul on Vita, Soul. Nope. 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 Oh. Oh man, Soul Sacrifice on Vita. Soul Sacrifice. Right. All right. Which was like, which was, which was a game that came along on Vita for all you out there on Vita Island. You know what I'm talking about. Came along on Vita just when we needed like a big RPG adventure, and I had no idea that the, the guys from that game were behind this, uh, or, or team members. Uh, so this could be more of an RPG than most of other uh, third versus other games. So, fingers crossed. So, I have some additional details on this. The release date is going to be April 18th, 2024. The PlayStation VR 2 and Steam versions will be priced at $49.99. <laughs> I'm getting less interested by the minute. Uh, that's, you know, there was, there was something interesting that Third Verse shared that they actually have received tons of funding lately. Um, I don't know where they keep getting this money or funding from, but hey, uh, if they're investing it back into the game, then that's a good thing. Now, we saw with, you know, uh, there's a little game you might have heard called Legendary Tales. I'm not sure. Is anybody? What, what, what's anybody that? Legendary yeah, Tales? Legendary. I don't really know much about it, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, we've always believed that if a game, 
you know, is is priced at a if it's a, got a higher price, if it backs it up with the content, that's totally fine. Historically, third verse games haven't really done that. So not a lot of fingers content. crossed. Fingers crossed that this is like the hit that we've been waiting for. Finally, you guys uh, have any. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't really know what to say. I, I've, I typically haven't played much of their games. These type of like um, uh, arena-based uh, melee games that they do just typically aren't my thing, so I haven't given them much attention. They do seem to be produced well, and the players that play them seem to like them, although you know it's a very limited group of people. So I don't know. I, I'll wait uh, to hear what you all think about it, and if you say it's good, then I'll probably check it out. Yeah, I mean, Altair Breaker I actually had a really good time with, but the limited content was a real issue. It was like there was no variation of levels. And look, again, I always use this disclaimer, I'm not a developer, but I do find that they did the, the hard work. Like, they've created the enemies, they've created that the combat in Altair Breaker was amazing with the music. Like, I felt like I was doing, like, the Omni Slash as Cloud Strife in the air, like, when you're just yeeting them up and then doing a combo on them, and it just feels so epic. But then when every time you do it, you're going through the same five levels, it was just like, why can't they have just like spent a bit more time just making a few, even, you know, you don't need lots of levels, just enough that you can shuffle them so that every time the experience just feels a bit more different. Um, but I had a lot of good fun with it, so I'm excited to see, you know, you'd, you'd hope that they've learned from the feedback uh, to do more. But then um, with their previous game, it was it Content Limited as well? Very. Was Altair Breaker... Almost, Less. Almost a step oh. backwards. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. That's a shame. <laughs> well, but they have more money now. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. 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 To spend on marketing <laughs> of their limited content world. They, they definitely do spend a lot on marketing. But, anyways, we'll keep an eye on that one as well. Uh, April 18th. Um, but exciting news, guys. Exciting news. I know. I'm excited. Are you excited? Um, what's the exciting news? <laughs> yeah. uh, Stride Fates, oh, okay. a VR parkour title, uh, Run or Die has <laughs> not Run or Die popped well, up. Uh, Run or Die is now gone, so they've had to replace it with something else. So this is it. <laughs> so, maybe, so maybe it's because of you. If, ever, if anybody doesn't know, it's because of Miles that Run or Die no longer exists. Run or Die has died on the yeah. PlayStation <laughs> Store. <laughs> right, he complained. The so game, the game run, yeah. and then it died. <laughs> my, my favorite part. And, uh, sorry to. Go off on a tangent. My favorite part of Miles getting this thing off the store <laughs> was was him complaining to Sony and then, then them saying, do you have a video or something showing us what's wrong with the game? And boy, do I ever. Well, my, my, my favorite part of it was they said, we're going to refund the game out of a gesture of goodwill, which means kind of like, we didn't have to, but we could have, like, not because, you know, they took it down, so they would have to refund it, but it's like, we're just doing it as a gesture of goodwill, as opposed to giving you the middle finger and saying, we're taking it down, but we got your money already, so tough luck, buddy. Um, but yeah, I didn't play a lot of Stride, so um, for this, this version, I, I assume this is a brand new title. It's not like a, a definitive version of the original game. Yeah, that's a good question because... The PlayStation Store described it as... <laughs> what the PlayStation Store and what, uh, just what they're legally allowed to tell us is... Um, yeah, this is, of course, the, the follow-up to Stride, which was an, um, actually a really, really fun VR parkour game. I mean, I, love, I thought the controls were really intuitive. Uh, the gameplay was really fun graphically. Like, it was solid. Um, it's it's one of those where it's going to make you do a lot of this, so it might be a little bit of physical, but but this but this um, is the stride we wanted, right, Wes? This, like this is this, exactly. this is the campaign. So you see, I I am not a fi fan of the original stride. I did oh. not like Just it. Just make sure you give him the microphone. Yeah. I thought the controls were uh, unnecessarily um, tedious. Agreed. And um, I, I just fun. didn't I didn't really care for it. I, f I felt like it was an aimless runner that was fun for about five minutes, and then it got old pretty quickly uh with that said uh stride fates is awesome uh i, I played this on quest and played it for quite a while and uh, it's fun you're right brian this is what we wanted stride to be it's that uh, action campaign it's fast paced through the most of it but there's a bit of exploration and the maps are fairly expansive um and the controls have been tweaked just enough they're not perfect they're still not perfect but they're way better than they were before. And this well, can, is I, can I, I need to ask you an important question. When you jump, 
Do you still have to go, wee? <laughs> no, no, Good. you don't. Good, because I'm not um, a wee kind of person. <laughs> they still have some of the arm swing stuff that, that you've got to do to run, but... But no, they have a, a proper jump mechanic now. So, so is it linear, or you said it's more open? Like, do you, um, do you have, can you explore some? It, it's 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 linear and not linear at the same time. So it is it is a linear game. You you are following a path, but um, there there it's a branching path. So there, there, you, it branches off a little bit. Okay, you're going to end up in the same spot, uh, but there's enough uh, variety to it that. Um, that it gives the illusion of it not being so linear sometimes. Okay. So you um, didn't like the original stride? No. Um, Wait. But this is a story-driven version. Is it? Uh, how's the story of this? Uh, the story is pretty cool. I mean, it's not about the story. I'm glad that there is one and th because I like to have an objective, uh, a reason for for whatever I'm doing in the game. Uh, this is very much an action game. It's not not an adventure game. Um, it's a it's a it's an action game with, with a story that, that's being told, but it, it's all about the minute-to-minute, high-impact, high-paced um, action, and it, it does a pretty good job of like progression. You know, giving you new skills and abilities and weapons as you make your way through the levels, and uh, and at the end of the level, there's a boss fight, and which is something Ooh. that we we don't often see these days. Ten in out games. of ten. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Uh, no, so it's really good. It's good. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's going to be game of the year or anything, but it is very good and it's much better than the original Stride. So the most notable uh, things that we can look forward to with this, it, according to PlayStation Store, uh, is... The most reliable source. <laughs> so this is a new, of course, story-driven campaign, uh, but also uh, it does mention that there are PSVR 2 enhancements. And again, we have to kind of take that with a grain of salt uh, historically speaking, but um, it is expected to feature, uh, you know, take advantage of the new hardware. And uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to this one, actually. I, I really like the first one. Um, I'm very excited about this. And I think a lot of people in general wanted a story driven campaign to feel like they're doing something meaningful with this gameplay loop. Well, it just so happens that we were promised a story-driven campaign when Stride was announced. Uh, and uh, apparently they were talking about the sequel. Who knew? So does it, this doesn't include any of the modes from the original? No, no, no. Okay. I don't, so, I don't so, think so. So we still need Stride so proper on PSVR 2? No, no, you don't need I mean, I guess if you like playing this. I, I, I like the endless run. Yeah, okay. you'll, you'll have to go to Stride to play that. I yeah. do like the endless mode, but... Yeah. Uh, Resident Evil. Four. <laughs> uh, Remake. We, uh, so Resident Evil 4, Capcom has a, uh, a tracker that tells you how many players are playing the game in VR. What do you, what do you think? Well, shoot, does anybody not know this number? What do you guys think? <laughs> what are you out there watching right now think that the, uh, that the player count is? Well, the answer is is that it is nearly, nearly... It's like the price is right. <laughs> oh, okay. Three, three. We've got, we've got three. 100, 300. Uh, almost almost 100,000 people have played Resident Evil 4 in VR. But it gets even better. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Uh, it gets chat. even better. <laughs> Super chat. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold on. Um, is, is there a message written on this? Yeah, I think so. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> we've, hold on. We've gotten a super chat. Wait, Brian, you, 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 do your thing. you know, you know, you know Brian, has to, Brian has to read a super chat if it, if it pops up. So, so what, is, what does it say? Do you need me to play some sirens? So, so one one dollar tip from Nicolo, and I and and, and 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 as always, I don't understand the tips. Oh, so I feel I do feel at home. I do feel at home because there's sirens here nonstop. Oh my goodness! Before I even got to the hotel, I got reports that it's like you're gonna feel right at home. We can't sleep. <laughs> so this news gets uh, yeah. There's a lot of sirens in Boston, by the way. Good God, like it is constant, mm -hmm. like. Yeah, wow. That uh, what you hear on your live streams during Gamescast, that is like everywhere, like constantly. It's crazy. Um, so this news gets actually even more interesting. Wait, there's more. Wait, 
There's, there's more. Wait, did you say the number? 100,000 right. uh, is, is about what it's at right now. It's like 90, last time we checked, it was like 99,400 and something. But this only includes people that opt in to share the data of that they're playing the game in VR. So this number is actually more. Now, if I were to be like, you know, guessing from the information I get from the internet everywhere, uh, randomly, I would not think that uh, this many people would be playing this. So that's, that's pretty good news. That's a lot of people, you know, that may not be a lot for AAA, you know, companies, big flat screen AAA companies, but for VR, 100,000 or more, potentially a lot more, uh, is quite a bit, man. Hey, Miles. Hey, Brian. How many? <laughs> <laughs> this is how we should have started the show, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Behind the thumbnail. Yeah, okay. that's true. Yeah. We, we can film that after. I think, I think we're doing it right yeah. now. <laughs> we can just edit it all. Yeah. The magic. Um, how many people do you think didn't opt in? What's the real number? I don't know, but does, does that mean just when you're setting up your PS5 and you say you want to share data f to help with the... No, it's, it's when you start the game, I think. Is that right? It's part of that whole resi net thing that, they, that you have to opt into at yes, the beginning? Yes, you have to. Oh, okay, so, so I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have even done that, yeah. So Capcom actually estimates that about 50% of people don't opt into that. So oh. we're looking at potentially 200,000 people here. Uh, that have played this, okay. and yeah, man. I mean, Resident Evil 4, what an amazing game, right? Absolutely. Like, I, many consider it to be the best PSVR 2 game, if not one of the best VR games ever made. Um, what, and What are the other million people playing? <laughs> Job Simulator, Beat Saber. There you go. Yep. The sales charts don't lie. But yeah, man. Um, it's an amazing game. Cannot recommend it enough. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think at like AAA games are really important for uh, sales. You know, when it comes to selling headsets, I think that's why we we preach the importance of AAA games. I mean, we love indies as well. Indies these days don't mean the same as how indies used to be. Like now, indie games can be the size of AAA games, size and quality, and um, but. There's no denying that the impact that these games, these brands, these IPs that people are familiar with and how many how they, uh, headsets they make people go out and buy. So, and, cool do, and did we have stats for Village? They would have shared that as well? Uh, I think they do do this as well. I'll follow up with you okay. on that. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah. I'll let you know. Well, just to see. Ten million <laughs> players. Over <laughs> it's up. Oh, El Elbert's got us covered. <laughs> uh, I'm looking right now. Uh, I I have the number uh, for Resident Evil 4, and that's 99,945. So it's gone up. Mm -hmm. It's gone up, f f yeah, like 400, 500 in the last just couple days. That's good. Um, but yeah, let us know what, what you find for Village when you get a chance. If I can find it. Okay, if you can find it. Yeah, if you can find it. Yeah, it's too late now. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Wes. Yes, sir. Something has happened. Uh, we've gotten an update on this PC support for PSVR 2. Why don't you fill us in? Yeah, well, I just want to tell everyone to eat it. <laughs> who told me when they revealed this about a month ago that PlayStation VR 2 would be getting PC VR support, hopefully by the end of the year. Most people said, ah, it's just going to be Steam Link. And maybe it will be, maybe it will be. But apparently this firmware update that I assume most of us experienced the other day when we tried to play something, uh, apparently, according to the uh, Ivory um, people who have been doing the unofficial mod work for this, the unofficial driver work, uh, said that it has now made the PSVR2 hardware compatible with Windows. They don't have to do custom drivers for it anymore. It just works now. So um, a lot of people weren't expecting this. Like I said, most people thought that this support was going to come in the form of uh, a streaming app on the PlayStation 5 console. And it, it, apparently it looks like that, I mean, maybe that still happens, but it looks like it's at least trending toward being able to plug directly into your PC. Now, with that being said, most PC graphics cards don't have the 
capability uh, of accepting the type of interface that PSVR2 uses. So there will likely have to be some sort of adapter involved for most people, if this is actually true and this is how it goes down. Um, but they already sell these adapters. Um, they're like 100 bucks, 150 bucks, and that's assuming that Sony doesn't make their own and supply them to people or sell them at a low price. Uh, but I think this is exciting news. Uh, this is what people have been waiting for, not only PSVR gamers who also are PC gamers, but um, just VR gamers in general who play on all platforms who are kind of on the fence about whether or not they should buy a PlayStation VR headset. People have always said, well, if it would support PC, then I would do it because there is no other PC headset that you can get for sub a thousand dollars that has OLED panels, has 2K per eye uh, resolution, and then you know the, the eye tracking, the facial haptics, the, the the adaptive triggers. This is a pretty advanced piece of hardware that if we could get the full capability to work on PC, uh, they'll sell these things like hotcakes to PC gamers. So. Um, it's a pretty exciting thing uh, and a pretty quick first step. Like, I wasn't expecting progress to show up this quickly. It was Sony, the way they worded it, they were saying, like, they were exploring it and that maybe they would be able to do it by the end of the year. They're testing it. Yeah, yeah but here we are a month later, and they've already updated the firmware, and apparently these Ivory guys have uh, noticed the difference immediately. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it does feel like the PlayStation are in very experimental um, so they have an experimental philosophy at the moment because of how much the, the game industry has been shaken up. I mean, you just have to look at games like Helldivers 2 where they, it was a day one release on PC and on PS5 and they were rewarded for that because it meant there was a bigger player base um, and at a time when they had over 10 uh, live um what's it called? Um, live service games uh, being developed and then there was a lot of uh, what's happening with you know the Last of Us project that's flopped? Maybe live service isn't what they need to be doing. And um, then Hell Divers Two has come and actually shown it can be done successfully in some ways. Um, it's making not just PlayStation, but also when we look at Xbox, everyone's sort of recalibrating their relationship. You know, in terms of what are they actually known for? PlayStation, yes, it's about IP. So does that mean you have to be so precious about your platforms? But the issue is, whenever you do these things, is as soon as you start um, allowing your IPs to go to other platforms, it's like the genie is out the bottle, you can't put it back in. So they have to gradually build up to that point. They can't sort of go back the other way and reverse engineer it. So um, I, I think it's very promising what we're seeing with PC. Um, and there's still a lot of directions they can go with PC in terms of what it actually means. They could still be like, we're still going to have a, a PlayStation store or, you know, offering on PC for the true PSVR 2 experiences while also allowing PC gamers to use PSVR 2. Um, and on the flip side, what does it mean for PS5? Are there going to be partnership done, uh, partnerships done with Steam and Valve in terms of allowing certain IPs to get the PSVR 2 PS5 treatment on our console as well? Because at the end of the day, they can do lots for PC VR, which is very important. Um, it's not in red. It's not in red, but um, fine. As long as it's there, it's, it's good. Um, but um, yeah, and so that's really important. <laughs> that's really important. But um, it, at the end of the day, you know, PlayStation serves their consumers on the PlayStation 5 and PSVR 2 first. And so they need to ensure that any partnerships that people that have invested in a PlayStation 5 and a PSVR 2 don't feel shortchanged. And I think that's the thing that they're going to be very careful on in the, in the coming months and, and years. How funny would it be if, if they actually did do their own like PC client, right? Their own software. And that's the only place where you can play like the Sony exclusive games. Uh, Resident Evil or you know Horizon or Gran Turismo these can be now be played on PC but only through the uh, the Sony client and then how, how hilarious would it be if you had to have the PSVR 2 headset to play these games oh, like these P these PC gamers heads <laughs> that, would explode if that, they did that that'd be a pretty dirty move I think people wouldn't be <laughs> I would love it I love it it would be so it funny <laughs> it would be it would be dirty but it would be great <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well I think the important part too is that People need to realize too that PS5 is still going to be getting games. Like yeah. this is the the whole ideology behind this is that they're it's to they said specifically that they wanted to expand the uh, I'll take this for <laughs> they, 
<laughs> they wanted to expand your your options with with the ability to use PlayStation VR two. So um, it's not like it's supposed to replace PS five or console gaming. Of course, they still want people to still buy PS fives, buy PS five games, uh, things like that. So it shouldn't take away from that. Um, it should just give you more options, which is what basically everyone's been begging for from the beginning. Is they want more options, more features, PC support, and and everything like that. Yeah, it is. It is a little weird to see people find this as a negative. To to find to to, to maybe not wrap their head around it completely and say, hey, my my PSVR two headset uh, is now lesser than it was because it has PC support, right? This is, this is Sony backing away, saying, I, we're not going to support the headset anymore. Uh, we're, we're just going to, you know, give you access to all these other games if you happen to have a PC. It's and Sony throwing in the towel. <laughs> it's Sony throwing in the towel. That's exactly, that's exactly it. And, uh, and, it, and it drives me up the wall yeah. because, as Wes has said, I think it was you. <laughs> Usually is. Probably was. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, this is something that people have been asking for for such a long time, yeah. and we're finally getting it. And then people go, well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like, the same people that, that said that, that this needed to happen. It's it's like n now now it's a negative thing all that's of a sudden. Bad. Always. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like everyone begging for AAA games, and then they release a AAA game. They're all Sony's get thrown in the towel. This is their last AAA game they're ever going to release. <laughs> yeah, and, and the funny thing is too, it's not like this is something that's just coming up all of a sudden on VR only. This is a continuation of a trend uh, for uh, PlayStation expansion onto PC uh, gaming platforms. And, um, you know, we, we've seen this over the last couple of years with, with other games, like flat games like God of War and, and Horizon and, and others. And it's, the kind of crazy thing is, is like three or four years ago, this was unthinkable. Like console exclusives were console exclusives. They would never come to PC. And if you could have taken a poll and it would have been almost unanimous where people would say, well, they'll never sell their games on PC. They want to keep selling their, their boxes to people. Uh, but the, the landscape is changing pretty uh, significantly. And the writing's on the wall. Um, with regard to uh, exclusivity, and there's a big move away from it, uh, not only for PlayStation, but Xbox and, and everyone else, too. Um, and it's going to inter be interesting to see how people take it, because there's always been a, a very heated debate on exclusivity, and, and a lot of people come down on the other side that, that don't like exclusivity. So now these people seem to be, uh, we're at least on the way to these people getting their wish, and uh, it'll be interesting to see um, what everyone thinks going forward i really look forward to it um i think thank you i think um the the exciting part for me is uh you know there's of course like nothing would change with what i want to cover i mean i recently you know a lot of you know i bought a pc to try <laughs> to try <laughs> i know right i know it's crazy how dare what you what a traitor um i i because i've 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 just wanted to have a a better, more informed perspective and, and everything. We give you guys the, you know, we always want to give you guys the best information we can. And, and, and how's that going? Well, I mean, so, I mean, I, I've liked some of my PCBR experience and stuff, but really I just exactly like what I told everybody was going to happen is like, I keep coming back to PSVR, like I, I like on PS5. I don't know what it is. It's just got its hooks in me. Um, I think because I, I mostly use VR for gaming. I think if I was into like a bunch of other media, things like that, I like those things. I'm interested in those things. But now that I have the option, it's like, no, I just come back to the games every time. So um, for me, I, I, I would definitely consider, I don't know if you would, but I would be interested if I can use my PS, PSVR 2 in other ways uh, to kind of use that to bring more content to my channel or our channels, hopefully, and, and not less. We got another uh, we got another, yeah. another super chat here. <laughs> so I, also, is it just me or do do I pay attention to you more when you're sitting right next to me? <laughs> you do, <laughs> right? Because I listen to every word that you just said. <laughs> awesome. You missed them earlier. What? I miss everything. All right. So anything else on this? What? Are, anything else on the the PC support? I guess we're just waiting to see the full details. We still have a lot of details, right? that we need to hear about. All we, all we know is that the, the hints now are that it's going to be some kind of direct. <laughs> you should just hold it for me the whole show. Like. <laughs> See, he's paying attention though. He's paying attention. <laughs> no, no, no. 
Thank you, Brian. Sorry, Julia. <laughs> Mine now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we still got to wait for more details, but uh, some looks like direct PC support. <laughs> I'm just going to keep making things up and just trying to keep talking. I'm, I'm very clearly stalling here just to, until his arm goes numb. We'll see. We'll see how long I can keep this up until he, and he's still doing it. So it's yeah. working. So I'm just going to keep talking until he, until his arm gives out. My arm has stamina. <laughs> he's got a lot of stamina in that You don't arm. know what I do on my days off. <laughs> All right. So before we get on to our next topic. Who did this tip come from? Uh, this came from Metal Gear Solid Fritz all the way from the Netherlands. Woo! Hear me here. Uh, with the $5 donation, thank you so much for the support and love, my friend. Right back at you. Metal Gear Solid Fritz with the $5 tip says, hey, Brian. Hey, Fritz. <laughs> Are you going to do a PAX East impression reel or something? Uh, listen, I, I want to do everything. <laughs> I have big plans all the time. I follow through and complete 10% of those plans, <laughs> right? I would love to do everything. I, I mean, we've been filming stuff uh, pretty much the whole, the whole weekend. I, what day is today? Friday? Yeah. So yeah. since, yes, not the whole weekend. So the whole weekend. The weekend actually is technically All day good. today. All day today <laughs> we've been filming stuff. Wow. I can't believe I'm not like waking up and going home tomorrow. I feel like we've been here for a week. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I miss tornado, right? Yeah. You don't even understand, like the giant popcorn bowl of food and like giant pan of water I had to leave for because I've never left her alone for more than like two and a half hours. <laughs> oh, I don't know how much food she consumes, like when it's just a free for all. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I, I definitely um, there was there's been so much support uh, from from all the cats out there, from from everybody that got us here. Uh, and uh, and I think it would be uh, it would be the worst thing ever if we didn't like give back and say here's what we did and here's everything we filmed and here's so I definitely want to put those together uh, put this show together um, so uh, yes but but we should say this because it wasn't phrased as a game cat meetup highlight reel it was phrased as a Pax East highlight reel and if we're gonna do that kind of reel it's gonna be real short. <laughs> Because there hasn't been a whole lot of VR at PAX East. That's true. In fact, there was only about this much. And if you're talking about PlayStation VR, then it's really about that much. Which brings us to our next topic and the headline of the show. Which means, if, I know Waleed's not here, but he's going to be real upset because it's only going to be like a five-minute topic. Right? These, uh, we, we, we walked around PAX all day today, uh, and we did a, we did a bunch of stuff. Um, overall impressions before we can get into specifics. Uh, uh, AJ, this is your first gaming convention. Yeah. Can, can you pass me the mic? <laughs> oh, thank, oh, yeah. you. <laughs> what? What? thank you. Thank you. Wait, should I stand up and bow? Oh, thank you. Way to go. Way to go. Oh, man, right? yeah. I mean, it, like, it, by contrast, like, Wes has been to, like, 17 in the last year. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like, yeah. Uh, no, this was my definitely my first uh, gaming convention like this. And, man, it, it felt really special. It was... Uh, it was pretty wild. Just going out there, we'll, I'm sure we'll be rolling some footage here and showing some pictures that, that everyone can see. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've gained my whole life, but I've always like either gained by myself or with online communities, things like that. So just those first steps uh, at the top of the stairs that overlooks this entire convention, you guys, it was breathtaking. It's beautiful. It was, yeah. <laughs> look at that. That is, that is glorious right there. Um, no, it was, uh, it was really, uh, it was something else, man. I've never seen gaming represented uh, with so many people, so many booths, so many, you know, games showing off and stuff. And, you know, this stuff's been going around for a while and I just, I, I don't know, I've just never seen it before. So, it was. Uh, did, it you was see, did you see the Behemoth booth? I did see the Behemoth booth. The, we, the Behemoth booth was pretty cool. The right? redesign didn't the, look quite like I we, remembered. I, I know. <laughs> the kids at home are gonna love this. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the Behemoth redesign is looking really great. Um, I like the pixel, uh, the the change to the pixel art style. Uh, but uh, 
but yeah, man, uh, we, we definitely uh, have some, some cool uh, things we checked out. Um, there, was, uh, there was some VR representation. Um, we got to say hello to our good buddies over at Shell Games. A little bit of applause for Shell Games. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, wait, wh what would be the reaction if we had said Vertical Robot instead? Uh, listen, listen, though. That, that, Is Vertical that's Robot thought. here? Vertical Robot's not here representing VR. You know, know why? Because is? they're making games for us. Oh, are they? Are they? <laughs> are they? they, they <laughs> they're busy doing stuff. Yeah, Red Matter 3, hopefully. I mean, let's hope so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, Shell Games is here, and I think that that's, that's worth something, yeah. you know, because... Who else is? Nobody, really. We're, we're here. That's true. Yeah. And they're here. And they're here. We're all here. Give ourselves yeah, yeah. a... <laughs> but no, I mean, if, if we're talking about that, I mean, it's been amazing to see Shell Games uh, and what they're showing with... Um, is it Silent Slayer? Introduce yourself. What are you going to be doing, Brian? I'm Miles Dyer from the UK, <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to drink some tea and get scared of video games. <laughs> But uh, it was a really cool, really cool game. Not coming to PSVR 2. It's the usual answer you get, which is there are no current plans to announce for PSVR 2. Um, but, um, you know, this is what we say again and again. As long as VR is succeeding on any platform, it's, it's important for all of us. And it's also important because we change the narrative of those within the online space who try and, you know, I, I think like console wars we've always agreed is quite a toxic thing. I think it's even more toxic within VR because VR is a much more competitive market. It's a smaller market where you're not just having VR platforms compete between each other, but you've also got them trying to convert people from other gaming platforms. Um, and so, yeah, Shell Games they had a really good display. Um, the, 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 the demos they had, I think, were really, really great. And um, they're just amazing people. And, and, and this is why I really recommend people um, coming out to these kind of events. And this was my first um, stateside gaming convention, uh, going back to first impressions. And um, just, you know, meeting publishers, developers, content creators, gamers, it's a good celebration and when you do spend a lot of time you know talking about this online speaking in this case to developers directly it just bridges the empathy gap that is often seen online and you know people make games because they it brings them joy they like to bring joy to other people and people don't set out to make bad games unless you're midnight uh midnight works, midnight works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah which I feel less and less bad of uh, declaring uh, the, the more I think about it. Um, but yeah, no, Shell Games really represented it. And obviously we'll talk in a moment about PSVR 2 having a presence, if we can even call it that. Um, but yeah, um, I, for me, it's like there were people that I met at the convention, other developers who'd never experienced VR before. And I said, go check out Shell Games. If you've never had VR, check it out because we just want people to sort of enter the funnel of VR and then they can go on their own journey of whatever platform and everyone benefits. So just keep promoting VR regardless of where it's going to be. And to the credit, they had a little line, right? Like, like there, people were lining up to play. It was a cool looking booth and, uh, and there were people, we had to kick people out so that we could play. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I joked about shell games and whatever, but I mean, the fact is, is that they were there. Right, the person that I talk to every time I have to message Shell, or every time I get a message from Shell, Cat was there running the booth. Uh, I think I believe it was the the lead programmer, lead developer, who was actually running the demo, putting the headset on people, putting the controllers in their hands, explaining how to play. Like it, th there was certain, and there was there was merch there. Yeah. There, there was just a level of like care. The fact that they like wanted to be here, they wanted to show off their game, they were passionate about what they do. So I can make fun of all day, and and sometimes rightfully so, but. But the fact is that they they really do care, and you're good, brother. What what what's your favorite PSVR game? <laughs> Somebody's gonna answer, okay? You, you, you can't shut me down every time. <laughs> we should have had a demo, but we should have our own demo booth set up here so that these people that keep walking through, we can make. Hey, you want to play this real quick? Right? <laughs> no. So anyway, so I, I, that that's all I want to say, you know. And uh, and and I, you guys know me probably by now that I don't hold back. When I talk to the developers, I talk to any studio, I say what's on my mind. I'm not gonna just, because we're there in person or because we're talking one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not gonna back off and be like, oh, we're just happy you give us anything, right? Because we're not. We're like, Shell Games has been kind of 
irritating, <laughs> right? <laughs> we, we had to, we had to pay again for until you follow if you already bought it. Uh, Among Us, we had to. It never came to PSVR one, and then we had to wait for it to come to PSVR two for like a whole year longer than we thought we were going to. Uh, and where the hell is? I expect you to die one, two, and three. Like it's 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 maddening. But but I talked to Kat, and she had great responses, and I think. Uh, I, I really do think that if more developers talked to people like us, talked to gamers like you, the way that she talked to me today, and made everyone realize, hey, we're just trying to keep our doors open. Because sometimes that's what it comes down to. Yeah. So, you know, I, Miles preaches empathy all the time. But I think we need to be way more empathetic, especially with the current situation in gaming right now. Um, it's just, it's, it's so important, you know? So... <laughs> Right, I didn't expect that. But okay, I should stop there while I'm ahead. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. It's only Great. downhill from here. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, the, now let's shit on their games. <laughs> the, the, the only thing I, I, I would just add to that is it, it does become it's a, a matter of priority prioritization with resources. Um, I mean, like, just to have a booth at conventions is so expensive. Like, you would have, well, unless you've worked in the space, like, it's it's ridiculous amounts of money. Um, and so it's a gamble whenever people do it. And when it comes to priorities of what platforms, it's not just a copy and paste. Um, although I've been told there are sometimes, you know, there are setups that allow you to do it easier than others. But, um, you know, I've, I've worked um, and, and spoken with recently a lot of developers and the cost to, you know, have it repurposed for different platforms is just expensive. And so often it's not a question of if, but just when, and it's sequential. So it's like, if it's not on the platform you want now, you still want them to succeed because if they succeed, there's more chance of it then coming to your platform. And so if there are games on PSVR 2 that do well, they'll then get to go on Quest and people get to enjoy it there. And on the flip side, if there are games on Quest and do well, then they'll come to PSVR 2 as well. And I think that's super important. I mean, we saw a similar thing. Uh, with, with do, you, do you want me to stand up for this? <laughs> no, okay. no, I was just going to say, we saw a similar thing with PSVR 1 as well. I mean, it was like 2018, 2019, before most of the PC VR games uh, came over to Sony's platform. And it took some time for the, the platform to build up the numbers to make that worth it on, from a monetary standpoint. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming that we're seeing the same thing here and that all of these games that people want to play, um, I mean, we had a great two years run there on PSVR where there was just games on top of games every week. And uh, maybe we'll see something similar here. So. Yeah, the, the final thing I'd say on that is, and I think it's like I've mentioned on the show before, that like in technology journalism, the general consensus when it comes to reporting is that as human beings, we overestimate the short run when it comes to technology, and we underestimate the long term. Um, and that sort of happens with expectations as well. We just want the next big thing. Why isn't it here now? And it's why we remind ourselves again and again that, you know, it's just been a year since speaking, PSVR 2's come out. Speaking of the next big thing, you know who else? Is looking for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do we want to talk about this shell game? Oh, well, I mean, it could come to play, to PlayStation VR two at some point. Um, so it's very possible. Um, Intercepted. But uh, what's it called? Silent Slayer. Yes. Yeah, Silent Slayer was Vault of the Vampire. Vault, Vault of the Vampire. So in case it in, hey, ca in hey, case it was hard to remember, tell, tell us about. Tell us your version of uh, your experience with uh, in, in stereo. No, this is my show now. <laughs> I get all the microphones. Um, yeah, no. Uh, did, what a fucking name, dude! Si I couldn't even remember Silent Slayer. Forget about Vault of the Vampire. Is this like in the Silent Slayer series? Like, what's next? Like, well, Night of the Werewolf. To, to be to, to be fair, I do like, and it's not actually to pick on vampire games, but. Um, it's so stressful. <laughs> but fast travel games vampire game, I felt the title was way too long. Like if you, if you have to have a like a, you know a name and then like a sub name after it, yeah. I, I, you've lost me already. Like just <laughs> keep it to two or three. Everybody's words. Oh yeah, actually yeah. Everybody's yeah actually, <laughs> funny. It's true. I mean like. There must be a Guinness World Record, right, for uh, about, well, Walking Dead, for Saints and games. Sinners Chapter 2 oh. Retribution. <laughs> it was the yeah. only PSVR 2 Let's Play where YouTube said, your title is too long. <laughs> so I had to like decide which part of this name do I want to cut. So I just did CH for chapter and then I got away with it. So yeah, The sacrifices we make as content creators. <laughs> 
That's funny. That, that, yeah. But yeah, it was a it was an interesting game. Um, another one of those like, well, this is could only be done in VR kind of things, really. I mean, at least that's what kind of makes it interesting to begin with. If, if it wasn't VR, it it would be it would just be terrible. But um, you basically had to you, uh, you basically had to what infiltrate a you had uh, to play a Five Nights at Freddy's game <laughs> no, no, with no. a vampire. No, no, no. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> You had to infiltrate a, a vampire's coffin without waking him up or else he'll kill you. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, it's got like puzzle mechanics, um, my favorite. And you and you have to be very quiet when making certain motions. And then you basically have to get to him and stake him in the heart, right? Is what it was. Yeah. And, and it was, uh, I, th- I thought it was actually kind of uh, pretty cool in some ways. Like I, I like some of the... The mechanics of it, and um, it was a little bit challenging, uh, especially in that environment where I didn't really know what to do. <laughs> um, but uh, but it's kind of cool. I, I think I think we all agree that more vampire games are would be a good thing, like good ones, anyways. For sure, for sure. There was there was no locomotion or anything. You were just kind of stationed there in front of the coffin, yeah. and you had had some tools to your side, and yeah, you had to do everything silent, or you'd wake them up, there'd be a jump scare, and you die. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes. Uh, and the, the funny thing is, is that we were, we were sitting there with Kill Artists. We're sitting there um, with, you know, we were, we were all playing it simultaneously. You'd already played it. Um, who, who else was in our group? Somebody, somebody help me. Who's like, what? 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 Who was with us at the Sonic Anyways. Slayer thing? I think it was just the four of us. See, what? we knew Looper would have the answer. <laughs> Looper would <laughs> we get kind of Looper. Uh, it, and, and, and the funny thing is, is uh, there's some really funny video. Of me playing in like almost, almost like punching or hitting or at least touching kill artist who was playing right across from me, and and didn't it didn't come to us I don't think until after we played it and after we talked about it because you're just doing this this is all you're doing in the game it's not like there's different mini games you're opening nine different coffins and so how much cooler would this have been is if because we were all playing it at the same time. How much cooler would it have been if it was multiplayer? We're all sitting around the circle with our own coffins, and we were all trying to do this very, very quietly, but very quickly, to beat each other to the end of it, right? To, to actually like be able to see each other thing. playing it in VR multiplayer. Like, you know, it, I feel like it's something that would like not save this game. It doesn't need to be saved, but it's a very. It feels like a very small game, and I feel like it's the type of party game or or, or part, kind of uh, bullet roulette type thing that like you know you just want to play with somebody else. Um, well, the, honestly, though, I mean, the, as of right now, this is a quest game, right? Um, that device has the technical capability of co-location, so the, the headsets can see each other. So you could literally do same space co-op. So, I, I mean, if you wanted to do multiplayer in this scenario, you could, you, they could have mechanics built in where Brian's over here and he has to do one thing while I'm over here doing another thing simultaneously, slowly, quietly. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of potential there to make it better with multiplayer, but I feel like we say that about every game, right? Like literally every game. So yeah. I, I, can I just say, I like the idea that Brian's the one championing more multiplayer when normally I'm the one is like, I actually, I prefer doing stuff on my own, but, uh, yeah, so I welcome it. Yeah. It would be more fun. Agreed. <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, out, outside of the, you know, there's a lot of things. I think we can all agree. There's a lot of things that they could have done to make that game better. Yeah. But as as uh, as of what it is right now, what what did we think about it? Like I, I want to see where it goes. I think it's a good concept. If the puzzles continue to um, continue to scope up in complexity as you go, and they really get challenging uh, in the second half of the the campaign, I think that it has. It's pretty good. Like, like, like it's okay. But if it's just repetition and okay, now there's strings you have to cut. Okay, now there's a different type of like easy thing to do. Why do I feel like that's what it is though? Yeah, that that's the that's the my, what I'm scared of is yeah. that there's just some other easy thing that they're going to put in there for you to do, and it's going to be the same thing over and over again. I know what Miles thinks, and that is, I think he would want this game to have the stakes be higher. Raise the stakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good, very good. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave now. Taking him about. <laughs> yeah, stand up again. Thank you. Uh, no, but uh, okay. So before we get into, I, I was trying to figure out how to say that. I, I totally messed no, up. Good. I'm not as good as you at that. You no, know, no, but good. I'm trying. I'm practicing. I'm like. I'm just not used to I've got like it. The, I'm, I'm <laughs> used to giving it. Yeah. <laughs> just I've got the training wheels on still, but um, we did check out. We got to talk about this I, before we get to the actual PSVR two game that we played Whoa. and the experience with that. Um, the smell of vision was here. Oh right. We got to check out the smell of vision. Does anybody remember what that thing was actually called? So ele elevated perception, yeah, elevated perception was the name of the company, the developer, and uh, Game Scent is is, is the Game product. Game Scent. There we go. Game Scent is a thing now, people. It is a the thing. The future is here. It's about this big. Don't you see how important uh, this is? It's a thing for sure. Oh, here we go. Scratch and sniff cards. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I want to see what this anime girl smells like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wait, hold on, I want to see what this anime boy, anime boy smells like. <laughs> oh, that's where it's at. All this shit smells exactly the same. This no, it was kind of oh. interesting. So, yeah, we, we did get a quick look at, at the smell of vision. I was actually very interested in this. Um, because it's, uh, I don't know, it's just something I've heard people talk about, like, you know, one day smell is going to be here, it's going to be amazing, and, and now we got to... Did people say that? I knew people that said that. They were like, they were like, one day we're going to have smell vision we're going to be watching TV, and then, like, mist is going to come shooting out, and it's going to smell like whatever you're watching. I want to meet these people. <laughs> um, I, I, I could have told them. Well, well, yeah, so we got to check it out, and, uh... Yeah, it was. I, I just. I don't know. It was. It was interesting. I, I like the. I like the fact that, you know, there's people out there that are trying to innovate and trying to actually, like, create these things, make these things. And and they said that they had the hardware done for a while, um, that they'd working on the software for a while, and that actually thanks to, the recent advancements in AI technology, yeah. is what really helped them, uh, bring this to fruition. So. Um, I, I thought it was interesting. They demonstrated some Far Cry 6 gameplay where they were shooting and it would make like a smoky smell a little bit. I don't think I ever smelt anything other than flowers. And yeah, that's, that's kind a, of... That's a lost smell. Yeah, it's like, like flower, air freshener. It's just yeah. air freshener constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There wasn't... They, they did do the explosion and the explosion smelt... I don't know. I haven't really smelled an explosion before, so <laughs> it was. It, I mean, it was a dirty smell. I mean, just to, to, just to explain to people what this product was. So it is a unit where it has um, six capsules in it, uh, which has a liquid, which is a scent. Uh, and as you're playing, the AI is designed that it is triggered by audio. So if there is gunfire, uh, it then starts spraying uh, the smell of gunfire which could be like some gunpowder yeah, gun or, yeah. or something like that. So there, there are six senses um, in it, but one of them is the, the, the sort of the refresh one, which is you don't want your uh, room at the end of a gaming session smelling of gunpowder, um, <laughs> especially if you've got a family member who's like a cop or something and like, what's been going on here? <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, and so that's how it works. Um, and so it's all based on the audio. Um, and so there are some great questions uh, Brian was saying, you know, some of the environments you're in, maybe there's going to be environments that you'd want to smell, but aren't necessarily like if you're in a hallway, it's not everything isn't just triggered by audio. So it's going to be interesting to see how it works. But um, I welcome innovation in this way. Um, I actually also think that this is something that lends itself more to VR than flat screen gaming, because when you're in a flat screen game, you are contextually aware that you're in your room playing something on a screen whereas in when you're in VR I would argue you're more susceptible to external influence like if someone taps you on a shoulder while you're in a horror game you're more likely to do that if you're in VR because yeah, you're currently in the world uh, so I think like subtle scents uh, are going to be more impactful um, with this so um, yeah I mean I welcome it and these are things that come through in iterations after iterations I think the model they showed us was the second that they've got um, and so yeah um, whether it's this it's B haptics um, it's other peripherals you get for VR like the uh, is it the Om Omni tread what's the, uh, the, the oh, 
the treadmill? The, the treadmill, yeah. yeah. So, so these are all things that go through lots of iterations where at first they look very ridiculous uh, and they're like, they're clunky. Is this practical? But this is where it all starts. And so I find this as another a new frontier in, in sort of immersive gaming and experiences that I, I welcome and I'm really excited to see where it goes. Well, what, really, what really excites me about this one, and not that I'm super excited about it, but uh, what I found very interesting about this one, because I've tried these kind of smell accessories before, and to be honest, some of the ones that I've tried before actually nailed the smell part about it, but the difference was, was that those ones all had to have a, a, an SDK uh, and have developers develop individually their games to, to, to support the plugin. What makes this one unique and interesting is the approach that they're taking using AI. So the AI gets the sound from the game and uh, uses that to determine what's happening on the screen. Now, I don't know why they chose sound over just video because obviously they're using HDMI cable to get right. the sound. So why isn't it just looking at the, the screen and deciding from that what's happening, that I can't an answer. I don't know why. But uh, the fact that it's using AI means it's going to be universal, automatic, plug and play in theory. So if they actually can crack this, um, it'll just be something that, that you can get in and use with any game uh, right out of the box. And I think that's pretty interesting. And from the conversations they were having, like they're constantly iterating on like the different smells that they're researching. I mean, when they said the explo the, the smell for explosions, they were like, if it hits tarmac or it hits you know different things, what's it going to make a smell of? So they've chosen a smell that is more all-encompassing that it could be used in different contexts. Now, of course, these guys are sales guys, so they're going to be pitching the vision right. and stuff like that. Like, you know, how much are they going to keep innovating? But like, as AI improves, maybe that visual component will. But on the sound thing, what it reminds me of was many years ago, I invested on one of these, I think in the UK, it was called like the X Rocker Chair. It was one of these gaming chairs where it vibrates, like the whole rumble is in front of you. You got one, yeah? And it's all based on the sound. Uh, so when you're using gunfire, like I remember I was in Destiny using an assault rifle when I felt like I was in an artillery cannon. Uh, and it's just like, it, it was amazing. But it was, very, it was very simple, which is the sort of the rumble isn't necessarily accurate, um, but it's good enough that it adds to the immersion. And I kind of feel like that's the same with this, which is it's not going to be accurate, but it is going to improve the immersion. It's not going to take away from it if it's done right. It came off as like very early stage, but it <clears throat> but it actually worked. Like it worked as intended, which was cool. But but it's obviously very early stages, and you can buy um, it now though. You, you can buy it. You can like you can literally go on Amazon and buy this thing right now. <clears throat> yeah, hundred fifty bucks too. It's not that expensive considering what it is. Did he say how much the refills are? Well, yeah. Oh no. Because I did ask about the refills, <clears throat> and he said there's like four to five thousand like squirts. <laughs> right, like yeah. little mists from each bottle, mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, it's this is <laughs> right. It's going to go out pretty quick. I mean, depending on what kind of games you're playing, right? I guess, I guess it all matters. But you, but you know what? I, I think you and I talked about this. It's the kind of thing that maybe you and I talked about this. <laughs> the whole the whole Somebody weekend, about the whole it. weekend that hasn't started is definitely becoming a blur. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, it, it feels like something that you buy and go, I can't wait to check this out. And then as soon as all of the uh, all the cartridges of, of scent run out, you're like, I'm not going to I'm not going to buy replacements. And, that, and that'll be we'll the end of it. See if I can run this out within the return window. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. All right. So before we get to our last news story, uh, which is the last thing that we'll highlight, the PlayStation VR 2 presence at PAX. Um, we have a donation, Brian. Oh, who's it from? Oh, Albert. I mean, I didn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, you probably looked at the message and realized that, but... <laughs> El Virtual Game Cat. Hey with the $1 tip says, shocker. Pick a card. Ghost of Tabor, hype. <laughs> 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 you got to show how he wrote that, too. It's like, yeah. it's really like... <laughs> the hype is real. <laughs> the hype is real. It is real, yeah. All right, so... Uh, you know, PAX has never been known for lots of virtual reality presence. I think in the in the past you've been there, you've seen... Uh, Every year prior to this, it's been better. <laughs> it's been better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, it, and it does kind of, you know, tell you the, the state of VR that now that things after COVID and stuff have, have died down a little bit, that 
the gaming industry like we've seen the impact that that's had and it's been unfortunate and you know vr hasn't uh been immune to this either obviously it's been if anything more affected because it was growing from a smaller state um but the good news brian is and wes and miles and game cats here in attendance uh playstation vr2 did in fact have a presence at PAX East 2024, oh, but don't Jesus. get too excited. <laughs> uh, yeah, it ain't looking good. Um, uh, a game that actually just came out yesterday, <laughs> Captain Toonhead. Versus the punks from outer space. I'm so glad you finished that because I did not remember the rest of that. Uh, this is a game that actually was supposed to come out years ago. Yeah, this actually got debuted on a uh, on a PSVR award show, Terror Vision Games, uh, and I. They they made this really really cool intro to the award show, like, like it was like a news bulletin type thing. Like they made something very very special for uh, for us, and they were like, "Yeah, coming soon, the PSVR one." This was 2019. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, never came the PSVR one. <laughs> never came. Yeah. And it is a uh, it's a wave shooter. Tower defense game, I would call it, with a cartoony art style. Don't tell Emily uh, Baxter. Baxter hashtag, hashtag the cartoony witch, witch game kitten. kitten. <laughs> uh, I don't. But, uh, I don't have a picture of her, but I wish. <laughs> but so, uh, so we did actually. I, w I got really excited because, we or like, I, I could believe it. I was like, oh my god, there is a PSVR he two headset here. This is amazing. Well, we get up to it, and it's kind of. Abandoned? Oh, it's it's more than abandoned. <laughs> it was like abused, <laughs> torn out, and then abandoned. Yeah. Right? Like this thing had seen better days. All the cables were like wound up and twisted. And when I say all the cables, yeah, we all know how many cables there's supposed to be. <laughs> they were three times that many cables. <laughs> and and I mean, and I think you were willing to play with the sense controllers plugged in. Oh, I was and, ready to go. Right? right yeah, you, I was like, let's do this. Right? I was like, well, they probably just don't want people to steal them, so they're attached. Miles just walks up and goes, "Come on." Yeah, he just <laughs> unplugs <laughs> it. <laughs> don't put up with that nonsense. I could have just walked out of those, dude. That, that's a the yeah. controllers are a hot commodity right now. Yeah, you cannot get the bag, those. They're my spares. I yeah. could. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, they're now our spare controllers. Uh, I should probably not joke about that in case they have gone missing <laughs> yeah. on the shop floor. Oh, they are definitely yeah. missing. Yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer, <laughs> without parole is not uh, responsible for any controller, sense controllers going missing at Paxis. Um, <clears throat> we are, however, responsible. <laughs> <laughs> for fixing the booth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so we actually... Uh, <laughs> so, un unfortunately, when we arrived to this, uh, this, this one demo station of PlayStation VR 2 in the entire convention of what, like, t how many people go to this thing? Like... Seven. Seven. Uh, the, there's thousands of people here, it seems like. And tens there's one, of one tens, of tens of thousands. Uh, when, I, when I picked up the, the PlayStation VR 2 and I put it on, first of all, there's nobody at the booth. There's no, it's completely abandoned. There's nobody there. Uh, I put on the headset, and it's like, cannot, cannot search or cannot track your surroundings. Uh, the, the, the headset wasn't even, like, configured. You, you made a lot of things blue too, like by looking around in the black and white and painting things blue, right? I, I, I was well, like, any second my, now, this thing's gonna realize that you've got a play space. It wasn't happening. Yeah, no, it was actually struggling. It's interesting. PlayStation VR 2 does not do well on a stage floor, and that's kind of a problem because the way we all know that the best way to show off PlayStation VR, or VR in general is is to let people try it. It doesn't ever do it justice to see it on the on the flat screen. Um, you have to see it in the headset in most cases. Um, and uh, yeah, so I put on the headset, and it's just it's just like cannot track surroundings. It's and so so we're like, well, we we got this. We know what we're doing. We're, we're you know uh, and how to fix this. So I'd like to correct you. You were like. I've got this. And I was like, can we can we move on? Yeah. Like this makes me sad. This is true. Let's abandon it. I wasn't ready to give up. I wasn't going to let no headset left behind, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh but so I start trying to configure it. I it was actually really difficult. Um I'm sure we've got some footage we can play here of of uh 
of trying of while while getting it set up. And this is all this effort is just to play Kempton Toonhead, mind you, which which we will get into in a minute as well. But um, had trouble tracking surroundings. We finally, I'm like setting it up, going through all the things, you know, get, getting scanning the surroundings, uh, putting on the headset or whatever, and and I finally get it configured, and and it's it's like my arms are like ten feet to the right. Um, so so I'm like, you know what? Let me just restart the PS5. Because <laughs> like, like nobody's here, like what? What? Like who cares? Um, and then so like as I'm like trying to get this fixed, some guys like he. I notice there's like some guy just sitting there to my left, and I, and I'm like, uh, I'm like, who's this guy like watching? And I'm like, are you one of the developers? And he's like, oh no, we're not one of the developers, but we're here to take care of this booth, and we're running this booth for the developers. You're doing a wonderful <laughs> job. And and I'm like. Uh, okay and and like like I don't know he did, and he just didn't say anything like he was just watching like he's learning. like oh he was like learning yeah like learning studying. what he should be doing yeah. <laughs> so I was like all right I will teach you how to set this up um, oh that was actually nice <laughs> but uh but so we go through all I go through the hassle it was a little bit hard to, to set this up um, it, yeah it does not do well I don't know if it's like the Bluetooth the several Bluetooth devices. There was a lot of interference, obviously, because it was not acting like how it does like at home. Um, but yeah, so so I'm sitting there, I'm setting it up, and 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 Brian's losing patience like instantly because he wants to go do some other stuff. Everyone's like losing patience, and Brian, with the guy standing right here next to me, Brian goes, "Hey, when you get done doing their job for them, uh, come and see me over at Shell Games. <laughs> come, come meet up with me, Shell Games." And I was just like, and the guy, and the guy's just sitting there, just still watching, like, <laughs> like, like watching how to set this thing up. So, so I did all, I did all the things though. I, I, I finally got it to, to scan the surroundings. I turned off the the tracking assist so that you could actually see I can't stand when they have the tracking assist enabled and it and it has that box like if you're trying to demo something turn that off like because with the screen that the preview screen it looks so bad doesn't it so wait, wait, hold on so I, I I missed out I, I went to shell games I missed out on the rest of the story um, you didn't need the tracking assist to like assist in tracking. You were having tracking problems. Yeah, no, that I don't know what so, that so does. So you turned it off. I, I turned it off. And you had no tracking problems. And I had no tracking problem. I probably problem had solved. less. I had less <laughs> tracking problems. I don't. I really don't know what that feature does. Like all I know is that it makes a box around the preview screen. Yep. That's that's like the only feature that it, I know. It's, that it's, it, it's, it acts as an anchor, I think, so it knows there's somewhere in the room that's consistent, so it tracks based on oh. that. I, I don't know. Well, then I why could, does it work right? better yeah, with yeah. it off? <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I mean, this gets the the great. But I, I find this incredibly depressing uh, because this is the only PSVR two at PAX East. This is. So, so and, and what and what depresses me more was um, I, I was I was here a day earlier, so I, I I found the booth yesterday, and I went in and I thought this is great at PSVR two, let's check it out. Uh, and there was a kid that was with his dad, put the headset on, couldn't get anything to work, and like just took it off and walked off and went no, no good. And then I put the headset on, the eye uh, distances were as far apart as they could be. Um, the lenses were absolutely dirty and they did have like cleaning wipes at yeah. the booth but they didn't have anything um, I think it was Brannon had given me his um, microfiber cloth to clean it so I, I basically like you did today did, did a service job of it and the, the guys that work on the booth to, the, to, to, to be fair they are briefed to just like look after the booth as in like making sure no one's stealing <laughs> sense controllers or that I'm not doing think a good job they, of that either I, they, wouldn't have, they, they wouldn't have known they wouldn't have known <laughs> Uh, I bet you if they'd been stolen and people saying, well, how, how you control this? I go, oh, I think you pinch with your hands or, you know, they're probably just to blag it. But, but the, the greater point with this is, this is why PlayStation needs to have a presence at these events. During the pandemic, it was the issue of how do you promote 3D audio on the PS5 or the haptics? You need to show people and they couldn't do it because of the pandemic. They weren't able to do this campaign they had planned with all these different booths around the world. PSVR 2, similar issues, lots of great things, you know, we don't need to go from all now, that you, you really have to experience it to believe it. I have looked at lots of events around the world, whether it was the Tokyo show in Japan, and I looked at the Gran Turismo setup they had, and the display, and I'm sorry to say this, PlayStation marketing, it, was, it looked so poor in effort. Um, when I went to WASD uh, IGN's event at the end of the last year, and 
as a disclaimer, as always, I now work with Rapid Eye Movers, but it's because I like their ethos. Um, and the reason I bring it up was because at was the IGN, C Smash had this amazing booth with all this branding. They had the PSVR 2, they had a massive screen so anyone walking past could see someone playing C Smash and hearing the music and that. And it's like, these devs, we, we, we spoke about earlier about how expensive it is to do these booths. These devs are doing the heavy lifting for Sony, which as Brian said on a, a couple of weeks ago on the show, Sony takes a 30% cut on the store that they barely let people's you know games list on the store for. And so it's like, if Sony and PlayStation aren't at these events with a booth saying, if you want to experience PSVR 2, we're PlayStation, this is the way to experience it, people are going to go to a booth like that and say, yeah, this is why PSVR 2 is dead, because it looks shit, it doesn't even play. And so like, I, I genuinely feel probably angry for the first time, but I've, I've felt incredibly depressed by it, because that's two days in a row. Uh, tomorrow is going to be the busiest day, being a Saturday. And I bet you, and we should definitely go to the booth again, I bet you it won't be taken care of. And it's not actually the fault of the, um, the devs in the game. It's not the fault of the guys that run there. It's a systemic problem with the fact that PlayStation don't have any guidelines. Maybe they should be having uh, a thing saying, if you are showing our product at event, you can do it, but you must adhere to these rules for quality control. I wonder if they have any other games. Oh, they do have those guidelines as well. Okay, then, then maybe there is some blame to pass around. But yeah, incredibly depressing more than anything. I At a time they, that we see all this negative media coverage. I wonder if they have any other PlayStation VR games installed on that PS5. I checked. They don't. They don't. Because I was thinking, what if we all take 30 minutes to man that booth tomorrow? Just everyone. <laughs> and, we'll just do and, a rotation. And demo a good game. Yes. Get, get some players in, say this is PSVR, and then let them play like the RE4 demo or something. So good. So Wes, I'll tell you something. So this this demo station was was pretty free reign. Like you could do whatever you want. I restarted the console. I signed into an account. I could have signed into an alternate account. I actually did sign into an alternate account because I didn't know the password of the account that was signed in. Um, <laughs> I was trying to fix it. Okay. I was, I was <laughs> I was trying to get it working by so, any so means. You, sorry, so when you restarted it, you logged out of it as well? Yeah, yeah, I logged out into a different account. Yeah. Um, not into my account, okay. but, uh, but, but no. But uh, Then we would have had some games to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's the thing is I'm, I'm actually curious if tomorrow, Metal Gear Solid Fritz, who's here from, from the Netherlands, uh, <laughs> uh, he actually had a, a great idea that, you know, maybe we should... Uh, install some more games on here for more people to try out. There's only one PlayStation VR 2 headset, so... Are we going to just sideload it? There's not even an internet connection in there. Well, we have, a, we have an idea, Brian. We, oh. we, we, we have a plan uh, that if it works... I'm already on board. <laughs> so so we're, we don't, we're not sure if this is going to work, but assuming that nobody is attending the, the booth tomorrow, um, in order to actually get uh, PSVR 2 some decent representation and show people that, hey, this is a pretty cool headset with some cool games, uh, we are going to see if we can hook up a, a hotspot for it uh, <laughs> and, and maybe download, like, the Horizon demo, the Resident Evil demo, and, and see. And then, but it's going to say Captain Toonhead, so we... <laughs> So, Full so, advertising. So we, yeah, we might really say disappointed. We might inadvertently <laughs> sell a couple extra copies of Captain Toonhead. <laughs> But we're going to see if this works. And I, had, I had no idea <laughs> Captain Toon had started Leon Kennedy. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, but, but no, uh, but then we did get to, uh, we did get it working eventually. And it, it was a little, like, like I said, some interference, obviously. But then we played Captain Toon Head, and I, I only played, like, the first level. The good news is, like, there was actually, Julia was uh, helping me film uh, some of this footage that you see here. <laughs> um, and uh, the, she, she was telling me like at times she's like you've got a crowd like you've got a crowd of people behind you you know so I'm like okay let's let's try and make this look good you know but it it was kind of hard to make it look good but you know because it's a wave shooter and and a tower defense but it, it, I don't know it was a little disappointing uh, it looked good like visually it was crisp and everything um, but there's no adaptive triggers, really no haptics, so don't be expecting any features there. Honestly, the game is a little, feels a little bit of a generation behind. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, Samson! <laughs> Samson! Uh, but yeah, we, uh, 
but Wes has actually played a little bit, so can share his thoughts for any of those interested in Captain Toonhead until we give you an update on the booth tomorrow. Tell us right. a little bit about Captain Toonhead. So, so I, I think you just explained it. This, this is a, uh, it's primarily a tower defense game, but the, what kind of makes it different here is that um, as the waves are happening, you get to help out the, the defenses that you put in place by going down into a first-person mode and actually fighting with your uh, your servants or whatever, um, th this is one of my favorite tower defense games in VR. It's really good. Now, uh, how many favorite? How many tower defense favorites do you have? I mean, Out of curiosity. I, I mean, this is <laughs> sorry to interrupt. <laughs> this and, and Ginny and Thacko are probably the, the two that I really like more okay. than the other ones. And I'm not a big tower defense guy, so don't get me wrong. Towers um, and Powers is pretty good. Towers yeah, and Powers was okay. I've heard this good. Um, it, it's more pure tower defense than, than these types of games are that put you in the first person. That's why I like these two, because you're actually doing something other than the tower defense. But you're doing all that stuff, too. Uh, so I like it. But it does take it a while to get going and for the, 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 the levels to get more complex with multiple paths. And then you're, you're obviously uh, leveling your defense capabilities in between waves and in between levels. Uh, so it, it doesn't really show the best in, in the first level. And um, I don't know, it has a new, actually has a new, uh, a new game mode to now that I haven't tried, which is more of a roguelike because we don't have enough roguelike <laughs> shooters uh, already. Um, but no, I, I can't really speak to the, like, uh, you know, what it's missing as far as like adaptive triggers and haptics and all that stuff. When I played it, I played it on Quest and it didn't have any of that stuff and I thought it was okay. It's a shame, you know, obviously if you're gonna come to PlayStation VR two or three years later, uh, you should at least implement what makes the platform special. Um, but I mean, you know, the, the graphical fidelity, I guess is something, right? So Graphics are solid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I like it, it's okay. If, if you're, if you like tower defense at all, um, you should give it a shot. I'll cool. say that. So don't give it a shot. No, so <laughs> nobody try it. Oh, and by the way, we're, we're putting this this booth on blast um, for the, you know for for the way they have everything set up or don't have everything set up. We we should point out this is PM Studios booth. It's not Terravision Games. Uh, so I assume that PM Studios worked on porting this or publishing it. Or something, um, but I don't think we mentioned that. We mentioned Terravision Games at the start. This is not their booth. Yeah. So um, shame on you, PM. Games. I did. I did. Uh, I did mention that they weren't the developers that they were working. With okay, developers. Okay, good, good, good. But yeah, I, I look forward to updating everybody on what happens tomorrow during uh, our attempt to make a good demo station for PlayStation VR Two at PAX. <laughs> That can make for some interesting uh, content in and of itself. I already have one. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm? Oh, oh, we have a super oh. chat. We have a super chat. <laughs> this is... This just, just, this just feels dirty. <laughs> Sorry. This just feels dirty. <laughs> uh, we got... I want to talk to Samson! <laughs> With the $2 tip, says... Fly me to the fucking moon. <laughs> this is perfect. This is perfect. Um, listen, we, we, we've, we've done a lot over here with, with, with us. I mean, like, obviously, like, this, this, is the, this is the first time the four of us have ever been in the same room together. Right? Thank you. Woo you! Woo you! Yeah. yeah, this is also the same. <laughs> this is also the first time we've been in the same room as like pretty much all of you guys, um, which is which is crazy. The, uh, you know, it's, it's been it's been really really special to to be able to come here and, and meet everybody, uh, uh, put put a face to the names, and uh, I mean just you know get to hang out with people who uh, up until this point were like six by nine blocks. <laughs> uh, yeah, rectangles on my. Uh, you know, I, with, with you guys, it's just like you're a little square. And these guys, a little avatar, and everybody's right. got a name. Words. You know? Right. Words. And, uh, and it's just it's just been really, really great to come here and, like, you know, associate a face and a personality, like an actual person, to, to each person. And, and uh, 
in, in the distance some of you guys have traveled, um, right, has been, has been absolutely crazy. Um, and so, uh, I mean, I, I, I feel like we need to be, we, we just did a regular show. Yeah. I feel I feel like we need to include all of these guys. Yeah, I've been wondering how we're gonna how we're gonna pull that off. Yeah, I, I, I mean maybe. Well, <clears throat> there's, there's nothing up there. Yeah. <laughs> I keep waiting for it to come up. It just yeah. I mean, you just kept I mean up there, so. the, the show's the show's coming up on two hours. Uh, I'm I'm done editing at this point. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> So I mean, I mean, does anybody want to like you know? Does anybody want to come up and ask like an actual like question type thing and like why well, should put the camera Viewer on take you? Over. Like, right? Viewer like, take like, over, right? Viewer take over. Like this is this is awesome, <laughs> right? But like you guys are all here, like in person. Does anybody want to do an true. actual viewer takeover question? And we, can, and we question? can edit this in any way we want. So and, and look, if you don't want to be on camera, just raise your hand. I'll come out there and, and ask you. It's got enough range to any, make it any, over there. Any it viewer, viewer yeah. questions, viewer topics you guys want to do? And we're going to continue this tomorrow too. So, like, there'll be more chances. Wait, what are we continuing well, tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is, this, this is part two. This isn't happening this again is, tomorrow. <laughs> this is first part, part one. <laughs> no, 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 no. The people over at the, the Hampton Inn people are like, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> this is my show after right. all. <laughs> right. Also, yeah, shout out to shout out to Hampton at Crosstown because this is this is yes. the, the lobby of the hotel that we have just taken over for two nights in a row now and uh, and they, they have yet to kick us out. <laughs> They've been awesome. a, not, all, not only that, they've been there. Yes. Again. Yep. They protect us. They did protect us. The public they service did. announcement. They protected People, us from our own self. Keep your phones in your pockets. Yep. It's a rule. Yeah, if you yeah. come to Boston, come stay at the Hilton at Crosstown. Hampton. Hampton Inn. Hampton, Hampton Inn. Hampton 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 Hampton. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, and also root for the Celtics. Yeah. Yes. You'll put your money. Put your money on the Celtics. Put your, all your money on the Celtics. They're going to win for Everything. sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and just one more thing is I know there are a lot of game cats that wanted to be able to come to this event and weren't yeah. for various reasons, and some of whom we're actually helping you know with making this become a reality and uh i think that this has definitely instilled my confidence that this is something that could definitely happen uh it's not going to be just a, a one-off thing and uh, i think that anyone that has missed it this time if we have another pax east that we decide we want to be at um they'll have the confidence to you know sign up and and, and, and make it happen next time because i definitely look we still got two days. It could be an absolute disaster the next two days, and I might be like, never again. But if it if it maintains this momentum, then uh, yeah, I, I definitely would love this to be a, a regular thing, like every other week or something. Yeah. Next next time we we'll go to Sony headquarters with pitchforks. Can we do a simultaneous meow shout out? Oh yeah. As long as we don't like piss off security, because I have noticed like it is late and I'll we don't. Warn him of a really loud yeah, guy. and we don't and we don't want to like we don't want to have the show cut off. <laughs> Does everyone is everyone cool with a uh, three, two, one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Very nice. That was, awesome. that was good. All right, so I saw some hands up. Were the hands up because of you want to ask questions? Somebody, anybody? You want to get on this thing? That, that wasn't... I got a question. I got a question. Okay, go. All right. Go, Wes. All right, we have Highlight Notes. <laughs> highlight Notes has a question. What's your question, sir? If there was one game you could demo on that PSVR 2, what would it be? <laughs> so to, like, to, like, to demo to people on the show floor, if we had to pick... If we had to pick... So what would we use to I, you know, I was, I was gonna like, say I was going to say that was way too succinct for an Igme comment. Uh, and, and then as you walked away, you kept talking, and I was like, this is, this is more like it. So, uh, so what do you think, Miles? If, we, if we're, we're trying to lure people in, so we're, we're putting the headset on them, and first of all, winning the battle that they're not taking it straight off. And then over the course of the next 5 to 15 minutes, convincing them that this might be something they want to do again. I have the answer. You're not Miles. I have the answer. Let him go. go on. I'm, I'm still thinking, so you go for it. Astrobot 2. 
<laughs> oh, of course. We can make up games. No, uh, Astro Bot won. Can, can, I, can I get a vote in for Galaxy Card? <laughs> oh, no. I, if they, if they had, if they had <laughs> four Stop. booths set up with Galaxy Card, I mean, really? that would be great. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Um, great. I know people are going to laugh, and it's kind of a cop out, but. I mean, that boat ride on Horizon is not, not anything to sneeze at for somebody who's new to VR. It's pretty impressive, you know? I mean, on the one hand, my mind straight away goes to like Red Matter or Red Matter 2, but I also am aware that when it comes to the PSVR 2 headset, it is about finding the sweet spot. Uh, and it is about like, um, you know, making sure that the lenses are... So if you've got someone at the booth that's going to help them set it up properly, then I would say definitely something like that. Um, but I also think... I do think horror lends itself well to the floor because actually when we were playing the shell game, that was clearly going to be a jumpy game if you were in complete silence. You got to have the jump scares whilst also hearing the noise of the, the packs east around you. But like, I don't know, my mind straight away goes to something like propagation. Um, oh something God. where you're in these, these, these tight, <laughs> tight environments. Um, Today at PAX East, seven people died. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's so scary. But 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 also, you know, you you do. I think again, why Shell's game was a, a great exhibition was because it's a game where there's not full locomotion. It's it, it's it's a good introduction for people that are new to VR. And so I think a game where people can play it stationary and and don't have to move around much. Uh, I think is. Um, definitely a good criteria, but in terms of what games for that, I don't know. What about you, Brian? I, this is ridiculous. I don't, I don't know why this keeps popping up in my head. Um, I, I, I feel like people need to be more interested in, in VR before they even get interested in PSVR too, right? Before they decide on what headset they want, they need to do, decide they want to try something new. And, and for whatever reason, the only thing that's in my head right now, and I'll regret this literally in 20 minutes when I'm like, uh, that was a bad answer. Um, a Tetris effect. Because hey, yeah. it's, it's, it's just this spectacle, visually, especially on PSVR 2, where it's like and everything is screen. crystal clear. What was that? I said and on the screen that people are so, looking at. Them. Yeah. If you had that on a big projector above it, like with the music and stuff, it's, yeah, yeah. I think that's a really good show. You had some lights speakers. flashing in the booth, yeah. I mean, yeah, you could, you could make a big deal about it, for yeah. sure. But, like, I mean, you know, on PSVR 1, it was fine, but it was fuzzy. You know, in, in, in PSVR 2, it's just like, it's like those particles, like, you know, coming at you on the screen. Uh, and everybody knows Tetris. Everybody knows Tetris. Yeah. And, and, you know, what, because the dual sense or the sense controllers have been stolen. <laughs> <laughs> like, like out, out, there's always, there's always a dual shock line around or a dual sense controller, right? So, you know. Yeah. Doesn't that multiplayer too? And yeah, it has my player, so you could do it. I mean, from a marketing perspective, you could literally have it on a big screen with the music in the room, so they don't have to have the headphones on, but obviously they could have it as well. And then once they come off it, you could just say like, how did that feel? And like people around, you know, seeing it on the screen and then mm -hmm. seeing what the immersion's like, I think could be great. Yeah, and a game that, you know, you don't have to move on, like Switchback, I think is another game, which yeah. is, yeah. you know, you're sitting down there, you got two guns, people know what, you know, it's, it's a game that is intuitive, you know straight away what you're doing, so um, I, I think... In America. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you speak for your own culture, man. <laughs> so so, so wh while, we're, while we're mentioning uh, exclusives, which, by the way, happen to be what makes this, makes this platform awesome to begin with, uh, how about Synapse, or Synapse, uh, as some people call it? Um, you, can al you can also go for the popular route, and go for Star Wars or Beat Saber, just for something that no. is easy to play. I, I'm not going to vote for Beat Saber. <laughs> what? Ever in this situation. Yeah. People already know about Beat Saber. They want to know, which is why they would come and play. They'd be like, oh, I just want to play this just because. Hey, look, Beat Saber. So why, why, don't, why don't we compromise and let's since we're making up games like Astro Bot Two, let's do a, uh, real, a, a Beat Saber That's DLC real. that gives you actual lightsabers and then maybe you have enemies floating at you that you can flash to the beat. Yeah, I, I would love to walk by that booth and see people playing Pistol Whip. Yeah. Pistol Whip's yeah. a good one. Yeah. You know, but that's uh, that's one that Pimax uses in their booths a lot. Uh, uh, to show I mean, for good reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you want a game that when you see people playing it, you're like, I want to have the next go. Yeah. Um, and I think those kind of games lend itself to it because you kind of get a sense of like what, from looking at it straight away, you're like, I know exactly what this game is. I want to experience it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's another good shout.
Wow. See, I wasn't even service. planning on drinking the night, but people keep feeding me these beers. He I has just no take it easy. option. <laughs> Twist my arm. So, um, do, 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 does anyone here have a, a dual sense controller with them for when we set up Tetris Effect tomorrow? Great. There's a whole booth of custom ones. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right. Let's, let's just go buy one. We'll just buy one. We'll just borrow one. There we go. We saw it. We saw it, man. Use yours. We will. We'll buy one. We'll swap it out. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Who's got the next question? Albert. Albert. Yeah, I got one. Hello. Uh, so. Hey, Albert. I I'm pretty sure I could say for everybody here that uh, we really appreciate you guys doing this live for us. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, is there any consideration of doing this in the future? No. Didn't you hear Miles? I mean, like, tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe in, like, maybe in like uh, GameCat Meet of 2024 or 2025, I mean, uh, maybe. maybe. Maybe we all just move to Austin. It seems to be the cool thing to do. Can we guys. do this someplace warm next time? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, if you want to see me again, you do. <laughs> Worcester's the place. Yeah. <laughs> someplace a little warmer next time. Yeah, that would be cool. Worcester, yeah. Worcester is like three degrees warmer than this. <laughs> that doesn't count. Yeah. The wind here is Though like it does a have tornado. Bro. Listen, listen uh, I'm sure everyone's going to have a suggestion, and it's probably all going to be in your backyard. you right. <laughs> Wait, 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 hold on. Oh, okay. Wait one second, because I do want I do want to finish answering this, but I do want to hear your question, uh, and then we're going to show your artwork. It's amazing. <laughs> um, I want. I mean, listen. I, I think everyone is aware at this point that I was terrified, like to leave my apartment for the first time in years, to leave my cat, right? To do anything, right? I, I've been very unhappy with um, lots of things in my life. Every single person that I've hung out with. The last, how many days have we been here? Seven? Seven <laughs> days. We're just going to go with seven. It feels right. Every single person that I've hung out with since I've gotten here has been amazing, um, comforting, reassuring. I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, you guys are like family. Except for AJ. Except for AJ. <laughs> <laughs> who we tolerate because it's his show. <laughs> um, but, but, but for real, like, I, if you asked me, the, um, you know, yesterday, the day before, when's the next time you're going to do this? I would have said, fucking never, because I'm terrified to leave. I don't want to do this. I'm scared. I would do this every single year. Yeah. If you guys keep showing up. Absolutely. Kill artist has a question. Kill wait, 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 hold on. Video. Uh, thank you for the answers. Yeah. Thank you, Albert. No, thank you. Kill artist. Okay. I uh, would like to know what we are going to name the mission tomorrow. Uh, Project Takeover. Oh. <laughs> like Takeover. Oh, yeah. Now swipe split. <laughs> Excellent. Operation something. Uh, Serpents? <laughs> no. 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 We're trying to improve no. things here. Uh, <laughs> Rocket, this isn't the game. <laughs> Wolf returns? <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's good. good. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I like that. I'm the captain now, Toon Hood. <laughs> sure. Yeah? Operation I'm the captain now, Toon Hood? Like yeah. It. Is that satisfying? <laughs> All right. <Nice. laughs> All right, who's next? Oh, we got one. Go, Wes. <laughs> Too like many things to offer. We have a heat seat in Wes. Thank you. <laughs> Bambino. Bravo. <laughs> um, what do you guys think um, the reason there's a lack of PSVR 2 anything on the floor? Is it purely just a money thing that costs too much for developers to show up? There's not really any local developers nearby that's willing to do this, or maybe a lack of perceived um, caring for PSVR 2. Do you think there's any, or all of the above, is there any real reason why more developers don't want to show off their games, even if it's already been out for a while, just enough to just show it to people and get them more excited? Good question. 
I got it. All right, so this, is, this actually is a good question. Um, and I will point out that it isn't just a lack of PSVR on the floor, right? It's also just a lack of VR in general on the floor. Well, so there, there's, there was that bowling game. <laughs> there was. And somewhere <laughs> somewhere there's a, a horse racing game, too, because they sent what? me an email about it. I don't know oh, where it's at. Oh, we're definitely going back I tomorrow. I found it. <laughs> but... Um, and we can be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to pick and we, 20 uh, and we can officially become ponies. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Officially ponies. Yeah. Nice. But there's a lack of VR in general on, on the uh, PAX floor. And, and some of that at least has in part to do with the fact that GDC is also this week. And there's a lot of VR developers there. Um, but, I mean, it never has been particularly well represented here. Um, there isn't a VR section, uh, which we've talked about a few times today personally among ourselves. Uh, what do you guys think? Why do you think that VR isn't more well represented at PAX? I mean, this literally could be a full episode of Gamescast. Um, Tune in Friday. <laughs> uh, next Friday. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think there's... I think there is some misunderstanding about like how things work for a company like PlayStation and obviously I have no insight into this this is pure speculation but as far as I'm concerned like PlayStation doesn't have a PlayStation VR2 department they have like a marketing department they have people that do like partnerships um they have people that do like influencer outreach and their remit throughout the year is, are we doing the PlayStation Portal? Are we doing the PSVR 2? Are we doing PlayStation Plus? What are we driving? And we, we were talking about earlier for developers, it's about you know, where the priorities are. And this is the same for PlayStation. Like PSVR 2 doesn't have a department where they have someone that's the, responsible for marketing and development. And, you know, it's just they, they, they sort of have, obviously, the people developing the headsets and the games and the ongoing stuff. But... They've got they've got other things going on, and there is so much disruption happening in the in the gaming industry at the moment. Look at what's been happening with senior leadership. We've had obviously Jim Ryan leaving. Um, we've had questions about um, what is the the, the uh, what is the his fault? What, <laughs> it's what, what, Jim Ryan's fault. There was no VR at the show. Uh, what is what what is the future roadmap uh, with like you know first party games, flat screen as well as as VR. Um, so there's some existential questions going and also about like gaming and sustainability overall. So um, yeah, in terms of why is there no VR representation, PlayStation aren't here at all. So like not just in terms of like PSVR 2, PlayStation aren't here. If PlayStation were going to be here, PlayStation VR 2 would be a secondary thing. It'd be about showing their first party games and things like that. So again, you've always got to think about like in the grand scheme of things like our PlayStation here, they're not. Uh, and therefore PSVR 2 is, is, is later down in the pecking order. That's not to say they don't care about it. Um, it just means that it's maybe not as much of a priority. And when you look at the install base, this is what I've said again and again, it's all about filling the funnel up. I, I, I gave this, you know, this sort of speculation a while ago, which was if we say that there's been 50 million PS5 sold and we've got, like let's say, a million PSVR 2s, so 2% of people that own PS5s have a PSVR 2. This is very lazy estimates. But that just basically means where should they put their investment? Selling more PS5s. Because if they know that if we sell PS5s, 2% are going to end up getting a PSVR 2. Don't invest in trying to increase that percentage. That will happen later down the line as VR becomes more popular. Just keep filling up the funnel at the top. But, um, yeah, that, that's kind of my uh, little TED Talk. So thank you for coming to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 th I think you're right, obviously. Um, but, but also I think looking at the industry and looking at the types of games we've been playing and the type of games that we're looking forward to. Uh, indie games, indie studios have been carrying uh, VR and a lot of the game industry like on their back for quite a while now. Uh, and we, I don't think we'd have much to play uh, without them. Um, that said, we've already talked about how much it costs to set up a booth at one of these things right. and to see how many people, right? This, this isn't like a VR event. Um, Wes and I were talking about like how great it would be if there was like a, just a VR area, you know, yeah. like, that would like draw VR developers in. But but you know when when your when your studio when your staff is five, ten, maybe fifteen people, uh, setting up a fifty thousand dollar booth is is way 
way out of the question for something like this. Um, and as always, I'd rather get their game uh, and have it be done on launch day than to than to be able to play it at an event like this. Right, and then there's you know you, you talk about the cost of the booth. Uh, typically, for smaller indie studios, like there's a better ways to spend your money than putting a booth up at one of these events to spread the the, the word and, and create a name for your game. Uh, there's social media marketing and lots of other services that Impact Reality can provide you. So. <laughs> Go. Who's up next? Dan. Oh, oh, I didn't. Front row, I didn't see it. Wait, hey, so don't, there don't was. Uh, don't say anything yet. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> now I'm saying stuff. It's too late. You missed it. <laughs> Questions <laughs> over. Nope, stuff. that's it. Questions over. Okay, good job. Here, thanks for the answers. Um, so there are not a lot of VR games out there on the show floor today, but there was a lot of other flat games out there on the show, and we know about uh, the flat to VR thing that's going on right now. Did you guys see anything out there that you were like? That'd make a pretty sweet VR game. You know, this was in the back of my mind quite a bit while we were out there. But to be honest, we were only out there for a few hours, and I saw a lot of um, a lot of indie stuff. Um, there was a couple of things that caught my eye, and I was specifically stopped and asked questions about. We can't see you on camera. Oh, well, I forgot about the camera. My bad. Um, <laughs> There, there was a couple of things that caught my eye, and, and you know, what, what was the the game that we stopped and asked about, Brian? We asked him what the game engine was, and oh, I gave my bag to Albert without my stuff in there, it. <laughs> there, I think I might have it. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, he gave you back to <laughs> Venture, venture oh. to the vile. Yeah, we already figured it out. Uh, now, now this game probably wouldn't work great as a as a VR game, but I, I like the look of it. It's cool. It, it's a it's a side scroller game, so it would be more like if it, this were a VR game, it would be more like one of those Lost Bear type things. Um, right. Yeah, but, this, this uh, is a two and a half D platformer, and it, it, and it looked really pretty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could could have been in the next Star Child. Yeah, but but you but that's a good question, and Let's it's kind of one of the things that's been in the back of the mind while I'm, while I'm here. Um, there was some stuff, um, I, I don't want to start trying to spit out names and get them wrong, but th there was a couple of things that I saw. The Dalek had some stuff that looked pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, could, I couldn't name anything off the top of my head. Well, to be honest, we didn't stop and, and look a whole lot at, at the games outside of the VR stuff. We just kind of walked the floor and browsed and just kind of took in the, uh, the environment mostly today, right? We smelled some stuff. We, sm we did smell some stuff, some stuff, some good stuff, and some not so good stuff. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but everything that I everything I saw today that you know was flat screen related that I was even mildly interested in, I was like, I've seen stuff that looks just like this before, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I'm and I'm good. Um, there's there's a lot of this like uh, eight and sixteen bit retro stuff on the floor this year. Oh, I'll never get enough of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking like third person shooters and like the first person shooters, and I was like, I can't tell one from another anymore. But if they were in VR, right? I mean, uh, it doesn't. We were talking about TerraVision games earlier because of uh, Captain Toonhead. Didn't didn't they also make? Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the Dead by Daylight game. They did, and that's on and the that, floor. And that was there. Yeah, yeah. But so is Terravision right. not there, and they and they have no idea what's happening. You know, I didn't. I, we didn't go to their booth. Like, I, like, I didn't make the to, connection. To, to my point, just we now. didn't go to any of these booths and really check yeah. anything out. Um, so, but but you know, you know, Dead by Daylight, like those those style of games. Um, there's been a, a few of them. Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, by far the best IP using this uh, <laughs> gameplay right now. Uh, I would love love that in VR. Oh, by the way, in, in Seven Days to Die is there showing off a new DLC, and Looper pointed out that they, they already have a great VR mod available right now, so that would that would be a good one, uh, for sure. I mean, straight off the top of my head, there was two big IPs there that would just make good VR games: Pokemon, and uh, they also had Dune or Dune, as you say over here. Um, you know, who does who doesn't want to ride? A gigantic sandworm in VR, you know, that would be epic. So, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for that utterance. Uh. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the, the new Dune game looks um, incredible, and to, to be able to sort of go through those sandstorms and that in VR, I think, would be pretty uh, effective. And by the way, speaking of Pokemon, Brian got to meet a celebrity as soon as we got on the floor, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to meet Pikachu. Pikachu, yeah. It was a good way to start the day. 
Nice. Indeed. All right, who's next? Come on. Who's got a question? Question, question. We're done. <laughs> I want to talk to Samson. That's what I was yeah, thinking really. anyway, right? Uh, yeah. Get in here, uh, oh, oh, thank you, thank oh, wow. you. I got, I got two angles. I, I, I not really got a question, but I just wanted to say thank you. Like, people travel across oceans to come here, across countries, and it is incredible the Game Cat community, just how far spread out they are. How we're like just a big family here, and uh, just want to say thank you, and uh, super special to be here. Yeah. They all came we for the, to they, came, they came for the wristbands. <laughs> they came for the wristbands. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, we got to talk to Samson. That's good. Does everyone have a do it. Do it. You. Oh, Nihilus Ryan has a question. Nihilus Ryan, the game feline. It's just, a, it's, just a, it's just a fun time. It's a fun time question for y'all. What, what were the last platinums y'all got? The last platinum trophy. Hell, Hell Diver 2. But, or do you want VR? Yeah. Hell, Hell, Hell Divers 2 was uh, my last one. Uh, I just got Cube the other day. I got uh, Cube. Um, yeah, I that recently came out, and I really like this game. It's it's not even my kind of thing, but uh, but yeah, Cube. I I highly recommend it. Um, it's really fun, and if you're a, a trophy hunter, yeah, I got the platinum. Uh, it's it's a it takes a while to get. Like it took like 22 hours to get it, um, but it's pretty. But it's pretty easy. All in the snow. Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> no, it's a, uh, you know, I like, I love snow and video games, to be honest. So, like, like snow and water, like, those are, like, something I always love to see. And, um, yeah, it doesn't have water, but it does have a lot of snow. Uh, 20 hours of it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, it was, Cube was my last Platinum, and, and I really enjoyed that game. Um. I can't remember the last platinum I got. I don't. I don't get. To, I don't get to spend. Looper, what, what was the last platinum Brian got? <laughs> that'd be that would be impressive if you knew that. Right? Uh, okay, I'll try to use the lifeline. Also, also, I don't think my trophies are public. We should. Uh, we should just call it the Looper line. The Looper line. Yeah. yeah. Did toy trains have a platinum? Yeah. If toy trains had a platinum, I, I didn't get the platinum. Oh. I remember. There's like still two more. Red I, Matter 2? No, Red no. Matter 2, you can kind of beat it and get the Platinum. Yeah, I don't know. Like, literally, I had 42 Platinums for a very, very long time. Uh, for And then over the last, I think, year and a half, I've only gotten, like, two more. And, like, I don't even know what those might be. Um, yeah, I used to be a big Platinum Trophy hunter. Yeah, and, and, and now I'm just buried under a pile of new PSVR 2 <laughs> games to play. Yeah. Uh, and I can't, can't do that. It's a good question, though. Thank you. Actually, actually, my last platinum was actually a VR game. I remember now it was while doing work. Uh, C Smash VRS, I finally platinumed, Ooh. and it, there was a, there was one trophy left that I've been trying to get since the game came out, and it's where you've got to complete an orbit with every final hit of the level is a Super Smash. Oh, wow. And it's really hard because sometimes you're like, oh, this is the final block, and when you clear it, it then makes another load appear. And I was like, oh no, I thought that was the last one. And I was just, I've never, you know when there's that last trophy you're gonna get and you just know one mistake, you're like, you're on the eighth level, I don't know how many, I think it's like nine in an orbit. And I'm like, just don't mess it up now. And uh, so I'm more relieved than anything to have finally got that done. What about you, Wes? Yeah, I don't even know if I have one. I'm not, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a trophy hunter. I'm trying to get on here and see if I actually have one or not. But honestly, the the stuff it's telling me that my most recently played games is stuff that I played like six months ago. This is definitely not the most recently played stuff. Uh, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you what my most recent platinum is, or if even I even have like one. Even on I don't know. I don't, no, no, I don't. I never. I've never been a trophy guy. I don't. I don't care. Like. With, with trophies and achievements and stuff, like, I think it's cool to have them, and I like to see when they pop up, like, oh, I got one. And sometimes I'll even scroll through to see how rare a, a trophy is, and I'll, I'll be super proud if I get one that's ultra rare. But, like, I would rather have a silver trophy that's ultra rare or a gold trophy that's ultra rare versus a platinum that everyone has. That's just kind of how I am. But I don't go hunting for this stuff. I just like it when it naturally happens in the course of what I'm doing. Oh my God. <laughs> we just found out what Brian's is. But I'll just be fair. Brian, do you want to tell people what your last platinum was? 
No. Okay, there we go, everyone. Guess in the comments section below. <laughs> It, really? It is a game that has been mentioned during tonight's show. <laughs> we that, could do this. That, that's the only hint you get. That's it. This could be the. It's 20, not a horror this, game. This could be the twenty <laughs> questions. <laughs> this could be the twenty <laughs> questions. Wasn't a launch game. Know what this is. Feels like a launch game. Wasn't a launch game. <laughs> yes or no questions only. Sorry. <laughs> um, all right. Quick game of twenty questions, and then we can wrap this thing up because okay. these very patient people have been sitting here for two hours and nine minutes, which is actually a short episode for a Friday, <laughs> but but not a short episode when it's one a.m. <laughs> All so right, how are we going to do this, Brian? Because Who's thinking. Um, do so. I, I listen. Listen. I, I mean, thank you. It is the Midnight Games cast. <laughs> um, I, I I really thought that we we would pick a game. And then put Looper in the hot seat. Yeah. Because 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 Looper always seems to know the answer, and and we're not we're certainly not questioning uh, your your ethics. <laughs> I vote right. I vote we let AJ pick the game because he, gonna he, the game? he's going to make it super difficult. I'll let AJ pick the game. Okay, AJ's going to because he's going to make game. it difficult, and uh, because he always does that. And I'll, I'll take this. Okay. I'll take this over here. This should be a blitz, like, how many games can you get in six minutes? Yeah, so, <laughs> thanks for raising the expectations so I can fail harder. How many games what can you get in question? six minutes? Okay. Oh, I have no idea what's going on. Alright, so you're, you're picking the game. Then you're the only person answering yes or no. Okay? Okay. okay. So, so do I see the timer? Okay. So do we have a timer? The timer uh, doesn't count. Screw I the timer. Right. Okay, nice. Nice. Right. I'll give you one hint in advance. Well, <laughs> I'll take it. Wait, 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 what? I'll give you one hint in advance. Is he not, is he not speaking to this? No, I'll he, take he's, it. He's going over there. Yeah, but what about oh. AJ? Oh, Looper has to guess. Oh, it. sorry. Here, yeah. wait. Is you you yeah, yeah, but you, you, already pro is it me you already promised me a hint in advance, so <laughs> you, should, you should give I don't know how, I, no, I didn't know this was me versus you. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's your problem. You are representing all of us. I'm representing all of us. You have the game, and you're answering yes or no. It is your show. Yeah, why, <laughs> it is your show. Why don't you know this? <laughs> okay, so I'm representing all of us then. So I, can, so I can show you what the game is? Yes. Yeah. Sure. And we're all going to AJ the F out of it. So. <laughs> okay. No hints, okay? Don't give me any yeah, hints. No hints. You were about to give him a hint. <laughs> Why are you okay. telling me not to give him a hint? You got it. Okay. 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 So, and go. You're ready. Okay. I'm ready. Is it a PSVR 2 game? It. Oh, Jesus oh. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> is a PSVR 2 game. Yes. Was it a launch game? 10% battery left. <laughs> <laughs> was that? Was it a launch game? It was not, not a launch game. Is it a 2.24 game? It is a 2.24 game. Nice. So, <laughs> is it? does it have multiplayer? It could. It could. But it doesn't. <laughs> but it doesn't. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, do you... Uh, do, do it, it could have multiplayer. But it doesn't. Do you have any vehicles in this game? I'm going to say n no. May, may, may I ask a, a non-related question? Do you consider playing a vehicle? Do I consider a plane a vehicle? And this is, yeah, this is not a question. Uh, yeah, I would consider yeah, a plane okay. a vehicle. Okay, nice. We consider the Iron Man suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was, okay. the, what was the skateboard? Didn't y'all try to convince me a skateboard was a vehicle <laughs> once? <laughs> four wheels. Uh, I AJ. still disagree, okay? Well, <laughs> I still disagree. Whole crowd get up in arms uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. I yield. Yeah. I yield. It has wheels. Uh, oh my god. So that, that was, okay, that's, fine. that's what qualifies a vehicle. Uh, just to be clear, I'm not on a timer. You're not on a timer. You're nice. not on a timer. So but you are racing my battery Great. on my phone. Uh, so do we have a platinum in this game? 
D does the game have a platinum? Do you have a platinum? In this I do not have the platinum. So in okay, this game. so it's not cube. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, does it uh, look like realistic? Um. Well, it may have some realistic things. Some. It does not <laughs> look realistic. It does not. Does not. No. Okay. So, <laughs> what do we have? It's 224, not that many games uh, came out. So, it's not uh, Bullet Storm because it's not multiplayer. It's not uh, Ultra Wings because it has planes. It's. Uh, okay, I need to ask some questions that would definitely rule out Legendary Tales, and the question will be. Uh, uh, do we have magic in the game? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's magic in this game, yeah. Okay, I know another game, yeah. instantly. Yeah. Uh, do you... Um, is there a spiritual predecessor of this game on PSVR 1? Or maybe a prequel? They don't know the answer, they um, Is there a spiritual... Is it a sequel of a game on PSVR 1? It is not a sequel to a game on PS3 or Okay, one. so it's not uh, uh, that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you have magic. Do you have? Do you also have uh, like melee weapons? Uh, yeah, there's melee weapons. That's this. ten. That's ten. Can you craft the, them? Um, no, I don't think so. you cannot craft yeah, melee no, weapons. So you cannot. So it's not legendary tales. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, no what do we mean? No multiplayer. There's no, no multiplayer. multiplayer. No multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's. Oh, so you could have meant if the developer <laughs> did it. <laughs> it's messed up. You see how ridiculous it is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I, 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 I took it... I said it could, but it oh, okay. doesn't. It doesn't have guns. <laughs> the timer is up to like nine minutes. Also, <laughs> just to reiterate, it, it, is, it is not realistic. It is not realistic. And there is no multi multiplayer. There's no multiplayer. Oh, okay. There's no multiplayer. Okay. Now, it uh, could have multiplayer. It could have multiplayer. <laughs> but it doesn't have multiplayer. <laughs> does it have guns? It does have guns. So it has guns, swords, and magic. Or guns melee. Melee, melee, right. Yeah. Guns, melee, and magic. <laughs> it's uh, single player only. <laughs> so it's cartoony, now. probably. Oh, still going to get it. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah. the, the key part is 2024. Not so many games. So uh, Bulletstorm. The chat can help him out. Bulletstorm would, oh, yeah, would, wouldn't be can help you out. One hundred percent not realistic because it <laughs> kind of tries to be realistic. It just doesn't succeed in it. It's uh, not realistic. It's not realistic at all. What? Check is an idea. Yeah. yeah. You, you should like. Can the ten red maybe? Zero zero realism. Okay. So uh, does it have a super hard mode? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You've sunk my so battleship. <laughs> it does. It does perhaps I've have a super hot mode. Yes, it okay, does. Nice. <laughs> Two, so do it. one, zero, and time's up. I've never gotten twenty it's, questions. And we gotta go. That's all the time we have tonight, guys. No, 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 no. You have a wonderful night. We'll see you again tomorrow. Even as a lurker, I've never, I've never gotten twenty questions. So, is it paint the town red? <laughs> it is paint the town red. Good job. <laughs> Good job. I tried. I tried. I tried to throw him a curveball. Good job. Was great. Well done. Well done. GG. All right. So make so so so, so let's make sure we uh, mark that one down in the record books. Make sure we mark that one down on the record books so the next time it comes up we know that. That is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> right? Could have had that seven it questions ago. It but it's not. It could have been, but it's not. I said it's not. <laughs> Guys, I feel so bad now. <laughs> thank you, Wes. Thank you, AJ. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. Thank, thank you, Brian. Thank you, everybody who supports the channel financial over on patreoncom games. Thanks to everybody who is a member here on YouTube. Thanks to everybody who commented during the show. But 
that was you guys out here right now, right? This is the one, first one without a actual live chat scrolling in my face for a while. Uh, thanks to everyone who helps the channel run. Rock Pop, I'm sure we'll be uploading this on podcast services of your choice at some point. Uh, we got um, uh, Rody the Game Cat Army General, who good fucking luck with timestamps. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a fun one. Sorry, Rody. I'll send you the bullet points. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, just really, again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you every single person that, that, that took a single step to get here. Um, it means it means the world to all of us. Um, and, I, and I know that, you know, some of you are out there and sit back and watch the show and they'll tell you a goddamn word. And then some of you are like me. But thank you all for being here. We love you all very much. Three, two, one. <laughs> Very nice. That was, that was good. Unfortunately, is uh, not one that I would really recommend. The the right off the bat, man. How long? Did you just, call, did you just call me Batman. Yeah, right off the bat, man. <laughs> go, I'm Batman. Go, go on, Robin. I'm Batman. Um, uh, right right off the bat, like dude. <laughs> that dude also works.